Welcome back to the channel. I'm Rochelle, this is Friends and Gardener, and tonight all about sweet spreadsheets. Hey, Sheppy, welcome in. How are you doing today? Sorry, I was doing the plate. I was getting the spreadsheets all ready for everybody, so there is a link um, in the comment section, and there's also a link in the description down below if you want to click on it. I hope it's working. I don't know why sometimes I will share a link and then you don't have access to it. But if you're saying you don't have access, I did say I can't do the button that says anyone with links to do a little bit. But it doesn't always work. It doesn't always work that way. Um, so yeah, if you have any trouble with uh, getting links to open or understand any of this, feel free to ask any questions you want. Um, if you're watching this live, hey, thank you so much for coming in. If you are watching this on the replay, I will hopefully remember to go back in and put in some chapters uh, to help you walk through, or if you're watching this back, if you're I will be putting chapters in. It might take you to the different chapters, right? Because when it's live, sometimes it's a little long track, and uh, beyond is normal. Oh, no. Okay. Is that better? Okay, hold on. Let's see what it is. Okay, hold on. Let me make sure I'm using the right microphone. I'm getting a microphone. Is that any better? Not any better. The sound is wonky. Now you can't hear anything. All right, hold on. How about now? How do I sound now? <laughs> Is it any better? Any worse? Ay, ay, ay. Sorry about this. <clears throat> Is it working? Um, you know what? Let me put the headphones in and see if I what I can hear. It's better? Okay. I don't know. I just unplugged it and plugged it back in. <laughs> so... If you're watching this uh, live, thank you so much for staying with me. If you're watching on the replay, you're a champ. Uh, <laughs> okay, hopefully we don't have any more problems with the microphone. I don't know why it does that every once in a while. It's happened to me once before. It just like completely gave up. Um, I don't know. It's very odd. So anyways, thank you so much to everyone who's come in. So I said hi to Sheppy. Thank you so much, Ladies Farm. Uh, Katie for coming. I mean, not Katie. Late, good lord i'm getting everyone's names mixed up tonight um uh, ladies farm we have nicole smith gardening oh my goodness so yes tonight is all about spreadsheets so i am not a very um i don't think of myself as a very super like super organized person i'm more of a wing it uh kind of a person but when you are starting as many seeds as i am in a very small space <laughs> and uh especially when i started doing like the winter sewing containers and then i started doing the cool flowers so i'm like starting seeds i start seeds in january even though i can't plant out in may so i do need to kind of know what's going where and i i you know it gives me something to do in the off months so i am going to share with you the screen and i'm going to show you just originally um I'll show you the copy that I have um, available for y'all. Um, all you have to do is go and click the link. It's in the description down below, or I will copy and paste it a few times throughout the night um, into the group. And uh, you click on that. And then what you do is you go in and you click save as. Okay. 
save as or save copy. And then that will save it into your, your file. And then when you put all the information in, um, it'll be in your file. If you don't do that and you just start typing in your information, that's going to be on my account. And then everyone else with that link is going to get the link with all your stuff on it. And everyone, if everyone starts commenting on that same one, you're all going to mess all your stuff up. So <laughs> when you open the link, first thing you're going to do is you're going to hit the file button and then you're going to go down and you're going to click save as or save copy. Okay. Make a copy. I think it's make a copy on that. Okay. So let's just make a copy, then type in whatever you want. And then it's going to save that into your account. Okay. So I will walk you through that right now. We are going to share screen and hopefully it's going to share screen. Okay. Here we go. We are going to share a window. So here we are. If um, I'm, I'm pretty sure everyone's got Google, right? <laughs> So if you have a Google account, then you have access to Google Docs. Um, this is one of the Google Docs. It's Google Spreadsheets or Google Sheets. And if you use Lotus or Microsoft Sheets or any of those other spreadsheets, it's very basic, very simple to use. Um, I have locked in the top line uh, just so it makes it easier if you're going through and you have a lot of seeds. Uh, keep in mind, if this is too small for you, um, you can always just increase. Um, oh, I got to make sure I'm on this one. because. <laughs> or not yeah so you just click um hold down control hit the plus button and it's going to make it bigger right so that's a super easy way especially if you're on the the phone or the touchpad you can enlarge it um so what we have here is these are just my personal preferences of information that i have down you can change any of these to whatever you want and some of you might not be very detailed you might start all your seeds outside and so you just need to know kind of the where where they go how you germinate them things like that I kind of went a little above and beyond. I don't put all of this information for all of the seeds. Um, I do for a lot of them. And then sometimes I'll come back in and fill information in, you know, when I'm kind of sitting around and I'm bored or I'm watching something on YouTube. And so I'm over on the side doing some research and, and adding stuff in. So we're going to start off here with the name. So the name of the variety of the seeds, if you go with Latin, if you go with common, I usually try to put both on there just so I get used to using both of them. Um, but use the one that you're more familiar with first, because later when you go to do them in alphabetical order, then it'll be easier to find everything. Um, this one is my days to germinate or your, or the temperature. Okay. So this is, if anything is like out of the ordinary, I don't put this in for everything, but like, let's say the begonias, begonias say they take anywhere from 14 to like 60 days to germinate, right? So if something has a super long germination rate like that. I will put it in there so that I'm not freaking out and panicking and being like, oh my God, why aren't they germinating? Oh, right. They take forever. Okay. Peppers, they take forever. Okay. Um, up here, my last frost date, I didn't, um, I deleted all my information except for this one here. I guess I should have taken that off. Sorry. Um, so last frost date, just put your last frost date in here just so you know what it is in case you keep forgetting. It's there. It's easy to find. And then your last frost week. So which week of the year? is your last frost date because I go by weeks when I'm starting my seeds. And I learned all of this about um, two years ago over on Nicole's channel, um, Flower Hill Farm. She does everything by weeks instead of like the specific day of the, the month. And it's just made everything so much easier for me to figure out, you know, when during that week um, I, I'm going to start seeds or I can plant things out and things like that. Um, and then for me, um, is this, is this going into a soil block or is this going into a, uh, I put plug, but also like if I'm broadcasting the seeds, right? So sometimes, um, certain seeds that are super, super tiny, I'm not going to put them in the soil block until they germinate. And then I will pick them out and pop them up like the, um, petunias and the onion seeds and things like that. They're super tiny. I'm not going to start them in the little soil blocks. Um, I'll probably also note on here if something needs to be started in the larger soil blocks. So I start my seeds. If you're not familiar with my, my seed starting, I start my seeds with um, soil blocks and the large majority of them are in the three quarter inch square soil block. So it's very tiny. So there are a few seeds that just don't fit. Some of the larger sunflower seeds, um, nasturtium seeds, squash seeds, anything like that, canna lily, they do not fit. They're bigger than my seed starting squares. So then they will go into the larger soil blocks. So I will mark this on here so that when I'm going out 
And usually when I'm starting seeds, it's probably still freezing outside and my soil's frozen and I'm dumping boiling water in there to, to thaw it all out. I need to know ahead of time how many soil blocks, how many of the little ones, how many of the big ones do I need to make? Because I like to do them all at once. So even if I'm not starting seeds like that day, but I'm going to be starting seeds that week or in the next couple of weeks, I will just go ahead and just like bang out a, a ton of soil blocks. Ah, oh, welcome in, Danny. Thank you. <laughs> and keep in mind, you can customize it to however you want. You can take off a bunch of stuff that if you don't, if you're not going to bother putting it on there, because I know sometimes too much information can be just as bad as not enough information. It can just be overwhelming, but this is the way I like to process it. Um, and I like doing the spreadsheet because then I can go and I can change it up, right? So I can um, have all my information on there. I can change it and I can do alphabetical order. Or I can go and change it by weeks of the year um, that I need to start things. Or I can go and change it by things that I'm going to be winter sowing. Or, you know, you can go in and, and change things out. Um, so I do have a block here for direct sowing, which I hardly do any of. Um, for me, this is more, I use this more for um, like a succession planting. So let's say I start a bunch of zinnias indoors. And then when I plant them out, a lot of times I'll tuck a few more seeds down in with the zinnias. I do that with my zinnias and I do that with my sunflowers as well. So, um, and there are a few things that they say 100% you have to direct sow. Um, I don't know if I believe that anymore because so many times the things they say you have to direct sow, I've had luck growing them indoors. And if I direct sow, they just take way too long. Like the um, okra. <laughs> I'm still waiting for my first bloom. So I'm hoping it blooms before my frost comes. Um, things like that. Um, peas, uh, morning glory, things like that. I, I just, I don't know. I take, I take a lot of that with a grain of salt. Um, and then here, so this is now I, I, so that's like the seed starting part. And then this is kind of just going into the whole, um, planting part. Um, I, I kind of like to just keep it all in one place. You could divide this into other separate spreadsheets if you wanted to, but I like to do outside. So um, this is spacing. So how far apart do I need to plant these plants, right? And the reason I put this in here is because let's say I have, if you've seen my yard, it's a very small yard. And a lot of times I'm growing plants that are either going to go into a specific small section, or I'm growing a handful of plants from seed that are going into certain containers or pots. And so I need to know, I'll know in my head, okay, so I have a pot and it's like this. Um, and if I need to space out my seeds, say every four inches, then I know how many I need to start. Uh, if I'm spacing out every eight inches, whatever. Um, and this way I don't have to like go and check the back of the seed packets and figure it all out. I can figure it all out ahead of time so that I have my soil blocks ready. I have everything prepped and ready to go. And I can get an idea in my head of, you know, cause, cause some of these packages you buy the seeds and like a few of them, there's only 10 seeds in there. So, <laughs> um, uh, you know, I'm going to start all of those, but some of them, you know, there's hundreds of seeds in there and you do not need to start them all, which I'm slowly learning. You don't need to start all the seeds they have, right? Nicole, you don't need to start all of your peas. Uh, just because you have them, you don't have to start them. So um, the next one is pretty simple, is the week to plant outside. So like I said, I go by weeks of the year. So my last frost date is May 9th. So my week of the year to plant outside is 19. Okay. So on the 19th week, of the, of the year, which is usually the second week in May. Um, that means that that's my last frost date. So there are certain things I can, I can plant out at that time, certain things that are frost tolerant, right? Because it's still not safe for things like tomatoes and peppers, things like tomatoes, peppers, really warm, loving plants, basil. You really want to wait two weeks after your last frost date. So knowing what, my week is, and I usually just will write it right here at the top. I'll write 19. Um, then I know if it's like, if it's like lettuce and things like that, then, you know, they've already been out before. Um, I hope I'm not, I hope this is making sense. Um, I also started doing cool flowers. So cool flowers are a selection of annual flowers that actually can take a bit of a frost. They can take some snow, they can take some freezing temperatures, which means you can plant them out six to 12 weeks before your last frost date. So that means I can plant out certain plants in March, which is super exciting. So things like the Rebecca, the straw flower, the bachelor's buttons, um, calendula, all of those things that are listed as cool flowers. Um, I can plant them out 
much sooner, which is awesome because that clears up space for me in my, my growing room and in the greenhouse. So everything gets put in here on when it's going to actually get planted out into the garden because my space is very limited and I grow, I have like a, just a big shelving unit that I use in the bedroom with grow lights. And then when things get warmed up a bit, um, in March, usually end of March, beginning of April, we set up our little six by six little greenhouse, um, in the backyard and there it's space is limited everywhere in the house. So I have to know kind of when things are going out to know when I can start like the next round of plants, right? So if I have things that are cool flowers and they're ready to go out soon, then I know I can start um, things in the smaller soil blocks. So I know when to bump them up. It's very confusing. It gets very confusing. <laughs> Yes. And you know what? You are in an amazing place for cool flowers. Um, if you're confused about it at all, um, you should order the book um, or check it out at your library. Cool Flowers by Lisa Mason Ziegler, or go check out her YouTube channel. She has a whole series on cool flowers and, and planting them and growing them. And it, it goes all by your last frost date and your certain zones. So there are a lot of flowers like calendula and things like that, that are technically annuals that um, a lot of places can actually start so you start them in the summer and you plant them in the fall and then they get enough of a root system and then they kind of die back a bit during the winter time, but then they boom, come back early in spring. Um, like snapdragons, uh, things like that. Snapdragons are probably overwinter for you easily, um, Nicole, because I've had snapdragons overwinter for me as well. I had two this year, but we had a super, super cold spring. Um, but the year before I had like probably like half of them came back from the original rootstock and then the rest all self-seeded. So, uh, snapdragons are super hardy. Okay. Good, good, good. Yeah. You're just confused. You know what? Yeah. You just, okay. Order the book. Cause she has like charts and she's written it out and then just do it. Cause once you do it, I was scared. I was nervous the first time. Oh my goodness. The first time I was planting my stuff out and I knew I was going to be getting a frost and, um, I was so scared planting out my little babies. And they did amazing. They loved it out there. So the lettuce, the spinach, the onions, things like that, those, those can go out early too. Um, which, you know, especially for someone like me, when I, you know, I can't plant like my tomatoes and my peppers, those don't go out until the very end of May, um, sometimes beginning of June, depending on um, the weather that we're having. This year, everything was super late. So frustrating. <laughs> um, so then let's see, what else do we have on this chart? So we have, oops, I just made it way too big. Um, okay. So days to bloom. I don't really have, I don't really play, pay much attention to this. So like I said, this, this chart is from Nicole at Flower Hill Farm. So this is really, really important for her because she is a flower farmer, right? So she needs to know how many days to bloom and when is that first bloom date so that she can organize, you know, having enough flowers that all go together for making bouquets and things like that. But I do put it on there. And if the, the packet happens to say, um, days to blooming or anything like that, I add it on. But to me, I, I have to just get them started as soon as I can. Hey, Jan, welcome in. Hey, Mayfield Ranch. Thank you so much for popping in. Um, we are getting organized for next year. Um, so yeah, if you're new, I did drop the link to your own copy in the description down below and I can drop it right now. Um, if you're on the computer and you want to open up, uh, the spreadsheet and follow along, you can, uh, all you need to do is, oh, I forgot I was going to show you this first thing. So what you do is when you open the spreadsheet, <laughs> you're going to go over here to the cor the top corner, you're going to go to file and you're going to click make a copy. Okay. And then you're going to change it to whatever you want to name it and click make a copy. And then that's going to save it to your account. So then everything, you, all the information you put in there is yours now. And it's not going to be shared with everyone else that has that link to that file. Okay. So where are we at? We have week to plant outside. First bloom. Um, is it an annual? Uh, some of the plants, I, you know, some of the seeds I'm starting, especially in the winter sowing containers and things like that, some of them are perennials. So if it's a perennial, I need to know that in my head, like I might not want as many of them because I know they're going to come back or I need to know, um, how many of these do I want? Uh, where am I going to put them? So 
a lot of this is very like I print this out and I take it out with me when I'm planting things because I know okay wait a minute this is a perennial um is this going to be enough sun like is is it gonna am I gonna want it here for year after year like it's it's permanent right so just things like that it's nice to know harvest um this is going to tell you you can write down anything you want about the harvest um I think some of it were things like um like a dahlia if you're cutting a dahlia for a bouquet it will not keep opening once you cut it. So you want to make sure you wait until it's fully open. Um, if you're cutting a zinnia, you want to do the little wiggle test at the top so that it doesn't flop. If you wiggle it at the top, right, uh, just right under the flower, if it's still a little wobbly, don't cut it. It's not ready yet. Um, so things like that. So if there's tips where certain things like, oh, you need to cut it before it's open or you should cut after it's open or like gladiolas, I think you're supposed to cut when it's like two thirds of them are open. So any tips like that, um, it can also be for, for vegetables. If there are certain things you need to know, like what time to, to pick it, um, like for okra, <laughs> like be like, pick it now, <laughs> check back this afternoon. Um, just things like that. If things are different, right? Tricks. Exactly. Um, same kind of thing. If there's just something that certain things need extra care, uh, maybe it's got prickly bits on it. Um, so make sure you wear your gloves or there are certain plants that can cause contact dermatitis. So be careful like euphorbia. Some people can be allergic to that um, when harvesting it. Uh, so just be careful. Um, things like that. Uh, or anything else you, you want to add. It's kind of a miscellaneous um, one. And then here is can it handle frost? So sometimes I'll just put like an X if it's a if it's a plant that is considered a cool flower or, or frost tolerant. And um, just just so you know, like, you know, if, if you've planted everything out and you're getting a frost and you go and you click on this, um, it'll show you a list of plants that are like, mm -mm, absolutely not. So you might want to go and cover those and take care of them. And that way they won't get lost in the shuffle. Oh my goodness. Everyone is saying hello to everybody else. Yellow squash is the funniest looking guy. Who's little squash? Was it Nicole's little squash with the weird, <laughs> the weird little nose on it? Looks kind of like Gonzo. Okay. So this is the blank sheet that you all get to use. And now we're going to go over and I'm going to show you my flower chart that I used for 2022. Bom, bom, bom. <laughs> so, uh, as you can see, I didn't fill it in for all of the information. Um, I just kind of filled in as needed. Um, I will be going through this one and I will be updating it. So things that I am not going to be growing again, right? Like silver dollar. I don't have silver dollar seeds anymore. So I'm just going to go in and delete that entire row. I don't need it. Um, uh, Larkspur. I do have some Fox Love. I have, uh, I will go down love it a mist. I don't have it. It's off. If I get it in a swap, I can add it back on. Um, poppies I have. So that's what I'm going to, I'm going to be doing, um, with a lot of mine. So here you can see, <laughs> um, my last frost week is week 19. So sunflower seeds, I start my sunflowers. Now this is for continued blooms on a single stem sunflower. So if you have a branching sunflower, or if you have single stem sunflowers that you don't cut, um, you don't need to keep doing the succession planting, but if you want to cut them and use them for cut flowers and they only grow one plant, one flower per plant, you need to keep planting them every two weeks. So this is why I put it on here. Do I do this every year? No. Do I plan on doing it every year? Yes, but it doesn't happen. But I did do two succession plantings of sunflowers and it did, it did work. <laughs> um, so I put it in here so I can start my sunflowers on week 16. Um, I need to start them again on week 18, again on week 20, a week 22. And at some point these become, and I should put in here um, some here. So some of them, I can't even type because I can't read my thing. So some of them will be direct sowing. Like when I plant them out, I just start direct sowing them then. Um, some of these I didn't, I haven't even bothered, um, putting in because I wasn't actually, I had the seeds, but I didn't really grow any of these last year. Um, a lot of this stuff just kind of came back on its own. Um, the calendula, I did start a few of those. Um, but like this, the Petiphilus Joey, it never germinated for me. Um, but I do like to put in here, um, if it needs light, Oh, that's the other thing I forgot to talk about if it needs light or not. So I was shocked last year how many of the seeds I was starting actually need light to germinate. And this is not all of them. I don't know 
where the rest of my sea chart went. I have another one somewhere. Um, so petunias, they need light. Um, uh, what was it? Um, impatience, they need light. Um, calendula, do not need light. I think calendula were the only ones in the cool flowers I was growing that don't need light to, to germinate. Um, so it's really important if you're having trouble getting things to germinate and you, you know, you're like, why aren't they germinating? Well, some of them need light and some of them need it dark, like pansies and violas, I believe like need it dark. Like I usually put them in like a plastic bag, like a black plastic bag <laughs> so that they don't get any light. And then I just check on it every couple of days. Um, but yeah, there were a lot of my uh, seeds this year that needed light to germinate. So I was like, okay, so it's really important for me to put that on here. And I, honestly, I don't know where my other, <laughs> is it this one? Is it on this one? I have another chart somewhere. Maybe it's on my other account. Um, it's very important for me because I'm doing them in the soil blocks and I'm doing them on trays. So I might have a tray, like a lunch tray that's like this big and it ha it can hold 200 and what is it? 220 soil blocks on a tray that size. So I want to make sure that I'm putting seeds in there that need the same requirements, right? So that was one problem I had last year when I do the, the cool flowers, but I left the calendula on the end and then I just covered those and I left the rest open. But if you put ones in the middle, um, that need light or don't, are different than the rest of the tray it can be kind of annoying because you're, you're trying to cover little pieces with paper or whatever, trying to get it dark. And it's not a great idea. Same with like heat. Like if something needs something cooler or warmer, um, growth habits I'm learning over the past few years with the soil blocks, I really need to group things into similar growing habits and, and time. Uh, if I have a few things that grow really tall, really fast, um, on my soil, the, the trays, it just can get kind of confusing. So that's that. Um, so what I like about doing, like you can do it all by hand if you want and that's fine. But what I like about doing on a computer is I can go like this and I can click on C and I can go to, um, tools. Is it tools? I can never remember which one is in. No, data. Go into data and I can short, uh, short my sheet so I can do column C and I can alphabet, alphabetize it. Right. So this way, let's say I'm trying to find, um, a seed. And I, let's say I, I'm a crazy person and, and sort my seeds alphabetically. I do not, but if you did, this would be an easier way to go in and find it. Okay. Um, and then let's say, oh, you know what? I want to know when, um, I'm going to sort my seeds by when I have to start them, which is actually how I store my seeds. Um, I learned that from garden answer, Laura over at garden answer. So I have like all my seeds that are going to be used in winter sowing. I put those in a baggie because I will be starting them all at the same time. All of my cool flowers go into a baggie. So because I will be starting those at the same time. So plants that are getting started in January, they go in a January baggie. Starts plants that are getting started in February are going to go into a February baggie. So by putting it all on here, um, then I know which baggie it's going to go in really easily. And then I can just grab that baggie when it's time to plant and start seeds that week. And I'm not spending my time wasting time going through everything else. So Oh my God. Well, that could be, <laughs> um, I will admit that I have, I do not have a heat mat. Um, I think it would probably help increase my germination and speed things up, especially with peppers and things like that. Um, I don't, um, I, I do use the lights. Uh, so instead of using, um, a heat mat, what I do is I take my seedlings and I put them, my, my, um, shelving unit is like right over my heating vent. So I'll put them like right on the floor, right on top of the heating vent. Um, and then that kind of gives them the bottom, the bottom heat. Um, yeah, that's too bad. Well, and the thing is too, is sometimes with it, it depends on the temperature in the room and the house. Um, some plants like it cooler, um, than normal to start to germinate as well. And then some like it warmer. So definitely read the back of the seed packets. Um, and this is why I like to do this now. Well, not now. I usually do this say mid November when there's nothing else going on. I'm not really starting my Christmas stuff yet. Halloween's over for us. Thanksgiving is over because we have Thanksgiving in October. So November is kind of a nice time. I enjoy sitting down, pilfering through my seed packs and, um, 
and just and reading the backs and, and finding the information. Um, now for seed packs that don't have very much information on it or seeds that you've collected yourself or seeds that you've gotten in a swap, my absolute favorite source for finding information on that and all things related to like when to start them is the Johnny's Seed Starting Calculator. So I should drop, I'll drop the link as well. I've talked about this before. I will take you over there right now. So we're going to go over to Johnny's Seeds. Oop, doo -doo, Johnny's. Oh, Johnny's Bar. No. What have I been searching? No. So we're going to go to Johnny's Seeds. I'm going to show you how to find it on your own. And I will drop the link later. It's in Growers Library. So you're going to click on that and they have all kinds of information here. So if you haven't checked out this page on the Johnny's website, it is amazing. They have instructional videos. They have planning calculators. They have your hardiness zones. Um, they have all kinds of information here. So it is in planning tools and calculators. So you click on that. Now, this is really cool. So this is the seed quantity calculator. So if you're kind of, you know, if you got, you know, a few um, rows of plants that you're growing on a, on a larger scale than I am, um, you can go in here and they're going to show you how many you need of certain seeds for the coverage of the square footage that you need. Um, they also have a different um, worksheets for tunnels, for different tunnels that they sell and things like that. Then this section here. Um, so this is my favorite one here. I'm going to open it in another window. This is the seed starting date calculator for seedlings. They also have a succession planting calculator, um, which is a workbook. So you kind of have to figure that out a little bit more on your own. They also have a target harvest date calculator, which is super cool. So if you need to have a harvest of say flowers or a vegetable or something like that for a specific event or a specific time, like say July, 25th, I have to have these um, ready to pick and ready to harvest. It will take you back to figure out when you need to start them, when you need to plant them out and all of that. Um, they also do it for the fall harvest. So, um, but with the fall, fall harvest planting calculator, you enter in your first frost date. Um, so like mine would be like October 15th. So I would plant that in and then it plug that in and then it would count back and tell me for which varieties of which plants when I need to start them in the summer. Um, and then this is a overwinter trial seeding start date. Um, I believe this is for the, um, this is for the cool flowers. So um, maybe check that one out, Nicole. I'll drop the link in the chat. So I don't think this one is interactive. I think it's the, it's like a, um, Oh, it could be interactive or it's a PDF. I'm not sure, but this is going to help you by your, I think this is going to go by your zone. I've actually never seen this one before. It's very exciting. If it loads, I don't know if it's loading. Do, do, do. Okay. We're going to skip that for now. We'll touch on that another time. Hopefully this is loading. Yes, it's loading. Okay. So I can't even tell you how many times I go to this page <laughs> and you can print it out. Um, that's usually what I do. So I have it in with my, um, uh, I just print out for, for my last frost date. So um, here we go. So you enter in your spring frost date. So mine is May. Oh, okay. So we're going to see next year. So my next year is going to be May 9th. Oh, May 9th. There we go. And I'm going to hit enter and boom, it just adjusted all of the seeds. And this is what it does is it says here. So it's telling me number of weeks. Can you see this? You can't see this. Hold on. Let's see if I can make this bigger. Hey, there we go. Is that better? That's better. Okay. So what it does is it has the crop name. It has the number of weeks to start seeds before setting out date. Okay. So that's like on the package, it will say start seeds six to eight weeks before. So it gives me, um, it, it tells me what that says. So let's say my basil seeds, my basil seeds, the packet's going to say start six weeks before your last frost date. So for me, that will be April 4th it does all the math for me. Um, and then it's going to tell me when it's safe to plant out basil, it's going to be a week after my last frost date which will be um, May 16th. Okay. So this is 
absolutely amazing. If you're not going to bother with the chart, at least do this, <laughs> at least use this, um, for knowing when to start your seeds. It's super helpful. It tells you when to start them and when to plant them out because certain things are more frost sensitive than others. So you, um, see beets, beets, I could plant out two weeks before my last frost date, right? So that means I can plant those out on April 25th cabbage a whole month before my last frost date, um, collards four weeks, um, so you're going to see vegetables are going to be a lot more. Oh, what do we have here? Cucumber one to two weeks after eggplant two to three weeks after kale four weeks before. So it's super helpful um, to know when I'm going to be planting them out. Um, and so then what I do is I take this day. I take these days and when I go to my chart, I also open up. I will and I'll do it for next year. So it is um, days. Oh weeks of the year 2023. So then I will just open up this um, and I have it open with me on the time. So if I'm saying, okay, so April 25th, they're saying I can do that. That would be during week 17. So then I put that into my calendar, into my chart as basil week 17. So um, here, let's just do it. Right. So we're going to go I got this thing blocking. Here we go. So we're going to go over here. We're going to go with basil. Basil. And I'm going to week to start my seeds is, um, was it week 20? It's uh, April 20. I can't remember now. I have to go back and look. Uh, oops. Yeah. I don't think that one's working. Okay. So basil April 4th. Okay. So that's one. And then I'm going to plant it out on May 16th. So April 4th is right here. That's week 14. And then May 16 is week 20. So I'm going to come back here and I'm going to go. 15, oh. oh, Nope. Say 14. <laughs> and then so week. Nope. Good Lord. I can't, can't see my keys. I can't see my keyboard because my camera is right in the middle of it. And if I make the screen smaller where I can see it, then you can't see it. There we go. And week 20. Okay. And then um, I would do it in a soil block. So to SB, direct sewing. Um, sometimes I do actually, I do both. So I will add a few um, fresh ones when I'm planting my tomatoes or whatever. I'll put one plant in and then sometimes I'll sprinkle a few more seeds around it. Um, and then if there's anything, if you know, any information that you need um, about when to start and how to start, this doesn't talk about that. Um, but it gives you all the other information. So it goes through most of the different vegetables that you can imagine. Um, even, you know, we got kohlrabi, mustard, okra, pumpkin, squash, pretty much your average um, plants. And then he's got all kinds of um, flowers as well. So this is a great source. Um, and I, I think when you print it off, it prints off in two, two pages. And I usually will print it off for the next each year and just keep it in with my seeds um, so that everything's easy to find. And it just has all the information, your cosmos, your eucalyptus, um, you know, all of those things. And I don't know so here, like bachelor's buttons, it says on frost or frost date. Um, some of these things like the calendula, the ones when they say that more than likely like bells of Ireland. Um, I don't know about asters, um, but a lot of them, when they say that it is considered, it is going to be in the cool flower family because it can take a bit of a, a bit of a cold weather snap. So, um, yeah, does anyone have any questions? Yes, it is Johnny's. Um, uh, I will drop the link for this. So just remember, um, whenever you open it up, it's automatically going to be on today's date. So just remember every time you open it up, you have to put in your, um, your last frost date, um, on your own. So, um, I'm just gonna, I have, I still have my seeds sitting here. I have not sorted them. I have not gone through because I wanted to, um, do this with y'all. So I thought I could just go through and do a few of these. Um, I'm assuming like things like black, like the coleus, um, different varieties. I just put them all under like coleus. I'm not going to do three separate, um, 
unless like they had like drastically different um, care needs on it. So um, let's just go through a new one that I, oh, I already have this one. This one might be on the list already. <laughs> Let me pull out a couple that I know won't be on here. Okay, so the impatience, actually, these could be on here too. Okay, heliotrope. I knew I do not have heliotrope yet, so we're going to add that in. So we're going to go back to my my chart. And I don't know I don't know what happened to the ones with all of the other ones from last year. <laughs> I'm going to have to uh, do something about that. So heliotrope, two L's? No, it's an I. Hard on the, the writing on this. Yeah. You can see the, the black and white is not the best. Uh, it's kind of dark in here. Okay, so this is heliotrope. And it says, oh, and I don't, why wasn't it on here? Because I do usually try to list, like, um, I will give it a range of how big the plant is, if it's low, medium, or high, um, height-wise, just so I know kind of in my head where I'm going to be planting out, like, this, the levels. Um, okay, so this is 24 inches. I put that usually in the kind of mid-range. Uh, and this says... Oh, and this has really nice instructions on the back. Direct seeding plants develop too slow for outdoor seeding. So no outdoor seeding in northern climates. Um, in temperate climates, you can sow indoor outdoors June 1st. Um, an excellent cut flower. So for me, this is absolutely not direct sowing. So I will add that in there. Um, it says a slow growing plant that should be started indoors by March 1st for July blooms. So if I want it blooming in July, I got to start it in March 1st. So we're going to go over here. We're going to see when is March 1st. So March 1st falls into week nine. So um, I do not want to plant this any. I'm going to delete this one because it's annoying. I'm not going to want to start this any later than week nine. So I will probably put in the number nine. <laughs> Oops, wrong side. Here we go. So I will actually put in like maybe even like week six to nine, something like that, just so I know. Um, oh, and make sure you leave a space in between them. I forgot to do that because otherwise, otherwise it does this. It turns it into a thing. Um, so I'm doing it again. Space six to nine. There we go. Um, so then I know like nine, I don't want to start it any later than week nine because then I probably won't see any blooms. Um, it says to germinate, it needs to be 70 to 80 degrees um, for 20 days. What? Oh my gosh. Germinate at 70 to 80 degrees for 20 days. Press seed lightly into the surface and cover with a fine dusting of soil. Maintain air temperature of 70 to 80 degrees. Um, during the days and 60 degrees at night for 15 to 20 days after germination. Then grow seedlings and plants at 60 degrees to prevent soft growth. Plants are ready for sale or outdoor transplanting about 10 to 12 weeks from seedling. Okay, well, listen, once you start blooming, you, you get what you get. You're in my living, you're in my bedroom. So you get what's comfortable for me. So sorry, but um, you're not going to be getting no 60 degree Fahrenheit. That's not happening. Um, so yeah, I'm going to write down 70 to 80 degrees and, um, for 20 days. So, uh, it doesn't take that long to germinate. It just, you need to, I guess, to make it healthy. Oh no. <laughs> uh, key got stuck. Oops. My key got stuck. Okay. So we're going to go with 70 and I do like to make sure to put the space in between because that way when I go to, um, well, I'm not going to be doing that with the temperatures, but when I do go to, um, isn't my keyboard lighting up? It's a, it's like a, it's supposed to be a special keyboard that lights up. It's not lighting up tonight. So that's going to be 70, 80 degrees. And for 20 days, can't see my keyboard. <laughs> okay. Um, I don't think there was anything else on here. Um, so it should be, um, it's, oh, so this is kind of cool. So if you're into, uh, if you really want to go into your garden planning, like here, it will say mix clumps of heliotrope with salvia or marigolds for good contrast. So that could be kind of cool too, is if you wanted to have a separate um, 
This would be really good for vegetables too, is you could have a separate column on here for companion plants so that when you are, especially when you're out in the garden and you're planting them, you know, to plant them all together. Um, so that's cool. Um, some afternoon shade is available to keep plants short, or you can put them in full soil and they get huge. So, um, so then yeah, uh, transplant about 10 to 12 weeks from seeding. So that's going to be 10 to 12 weeks after week nine. Oh my goodness. This is going to be, these are going to be a pain in the butt. So I'm just going to put that now and then I will figure out later, like, um, for my, how, it, how, how those factor into my, my last, uh, soil, um, prostate. So then, um, Oh, here we go. Let me just make sure I'm not missing anybody. Yell at me if I miss anybody. Um, I'll be getting some photo boxes this winter and really sorting out my seeds, the bins, tops. So yeah, I know. I hate that. I hate the mystery seeds in the bottom. Um, you should do a video of your entire seed collection at Wicked Awesome Gardening. I would watch. Wouldn't care how long the video was. <laughs> that would be cool. You could, and you, she could break it down into like tomatoes and, <laughs> and all the rest. All the rest. Oh, like Gilligan's Island theme song. There you go. Okay. So next up, I'm going to do impatience unless I already have them on here. I probably do. Um, I don't see them. I don't know what that noise was. It wasn't me. Okay. So I don't know. I'm upset with my um, keyboard because it's supposed to light up. I do not type without being able to having to see it, but it's hard when you reached away from the numbers. Like, why isn't it lighting up? It always lights up. It's not working tonight. Okay. So impatience. Um, so in seedling mix from January 25th to March 15th, although light aids germination, you should cover them lightly with vermiculite, um, unless frequently misting can be done daily. So, um, it needs light, so I will put that on, <laughs> um, impatience needs light. And when I'm germinating them in the soil blocks, um, I, sometimes I will put, um, like the really like, um, uh, what is it? Burlap. So it's a burlap that's kind of got a, a, a wide weave. So it still gets, um, light through it. And, uh, but it kind of holds a bit of the moisture. Uh, but most of the time I throw them into like my, um, my big Costco croissant containers. <laughs> and so they stay moist enough and I miss them every day. Sometimes I'll miss them twice a day. I'm a little obsessive about it. It's right by my bed. So I see them several times a day. So I'm not worried about dusting it with vermiculite. That's not going to be necessary for me, but if it's for you and you like your seeds are down in your basement and you don't get down there, like to check on them as often as you would like, um, then definitely put that information on there. Um, Oh my God. It's going into pH, a pH of more than, of more than 7.5 or less than 5.9 will prevent germination. You get what you get. All right. Um, conserve moisture. You can heat, put it with heat covered. Mm. Oh my God. This is way too much information. Seeds germinate irregularly and slowly at 60% to 80% in 20 days. And I will say, um, I'm going to put that on here in 20 days. I, I had low germination rates last year. Um, so maybe I should, <laughs> I should take a little bit more of this to heart. Um, my impatience didn't, did not germinate as well as the rest. Um, uh, we suggest you start impatience on the north side of the greenhouse or shade flats lightly with blue plastic or cheesecloth after and during germination. Remove plastic or glass during the heat of the day. Keep medium moist to the touch, but not saturated. Shade seedlings at all times. Never check the plant growth. Um, using soil that is neutral pH reading transplant seedlings at the same depth as they were in the seedling flat. This reduces stem rot at the base of the plant. Um, now that then there's more information for New Guinea impatience. Um, soil temperature must be maintained at 77 to 79 degrees. Oh my gosh. Um, so yeah, I, fortunately I don't think I got any New Guinea impatience <laughs> because I don't have a heat mat. Um, and I don't keep my house that warm. So, um, yeah. So then for, um, 
It doesn't say how many days beforehand. So it's an annual five to eight inches. It doesn't tell me when to start. It's just to start them on the north side of the greenhouse. It doesn't tell me on here where to start them. Okay, so then we are going to go to Johnny's seed starting calculator, and I'm going to go to impatience. Here we go. So it's going to tell me that I should be starting them March 7th. Um... I'm not though. I'm going to probably start them in February. <laughs> uh, that's when I started all of my, the rest of them. So the impatience, the coleus, the, anything that I want to be fairly decent sized bedding plants, the petunias, um, you know, they're, they're slow growers and patients were slow growers. So I will probably be starting them whenever I started them last year. I will not be doing any later. So I will be looking at my, my, I guess not this chart. I have it somewhere written down, um, probably in my, um, journal. I wrote down like every week I would put down for the week, all the stuff that I started that week. It was, it was fun. Um, my daughter and I were doing our journaling and we, you know, plan it out and would draw it all out and then, um, get to use the washi tape and things like that. And then I don't know what happened. Um, I kept a journal really good for 2020. I kept it really good in 2021 this year. I, I did not do great with the journal at all. Um, and so, yeah. All right. Does anyone have any questions about, um, and so I, and I did do this on yours, um, as well as you notice when I scroll up like this, the, the first two rows are locked in so that you never have to like go, Oh, what, 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 um, column is this for? What column is that for? Uh, so that's really easy to do. You can also lock the name, which is probably a good idea. Um, how you do that is you just click the C and you go up to free view freeze um no rows <laughs> you're gonna go with um, column and uh we're in c so up to column c is gonna freeze so that way when i scroll this way i always oops i clicked on the wrong what did i where did i go here we go um that way when i'm scrolling you know to the right i always know which flower uh which plant I'm scrolling at. So there we go. So I just froze all of these and all of those. So here on the left, um, I went through and, and some of these I had, um, I had the seeds for, but I was like, yeah, I'm not gonna be growing them this year. So I just put an X by the ones I knew I'd be growing for sure. And then the C and the W, um, those are for cool flowers are the C's. And then the W's are warm flowers. So that's how I, I, I established that. Um, and then I did do WS on the other. I don't know where the other chart is, but I did do WS on the other charts for winter sewing, contain, winter sewing on this side as well. And then I have them in here for like you can see here. So if it's going to go into soil blocks, if it's going to go in a tray. So I put tray, um, it's usually like a, a pie plate or something like that for the super tiny seeds. So that would be like my viola, my petunias. Um, and then for the winter sewing, I had, you know, a lot of these others. I'm going to be going through and getting rid of a lot of these because I don't, I'm not going to be starting them. Um, like here, the nasturtium, that's going to go into a large soil block, right? So um, it's just kind of something to, you know, keep your garden, um, in mind and, uh, an excuse to just keep going through your seed packets, um, over and over and over again. So, um, that is how I organize it. And you are more than welcome to go in and add any columns that you want or delete any other columns, um, that you don't really need. I think I'm actually going to go into mine and add the companion plants, um, because I, I really, I like that idea. Um, I really, and I just follow, I can't see what I'm doing. Um, and I can't find the, come on. It's not helping. Okay, whatever. I'll figure everything out later. Um, I do like that. So, um, like, especially, you know, if you're doing tomatoes and you want to plant in your basil um, or certain things or certain companion plants or certain things that you should not plant together. Because I know there's onions that you're not supposed to plant with certain things. Right. So whatever. Um, 
so yeah, if anyone has any more questions, hey, Krabby, welcome in. How are you doing? Saying hi to everybody. Um, hey, you grow row. Nice to have you in here tonight. I also like the idea of adding companion plans. This spreadsheet is amazing. Thank you. I can't take all the credit. So the original spreadsheet it does not have all of this information and it has different um more on like the cutting and the harvesting and things like that. Um, and the aftercare of the flowers. Um, and that was because that was from Nicole at flower Hill farm. If you want to see hers, you can just type in flower Hill farm. Um, and she did a live where she showed her spreadsheet like this and she shared a copy and then she told everybody go in, save a copy. So you don't mess up my spreadsheet. Um, and, and that's where I got the idea. And then like she had certain, certain rows and certain things in there that I was like, yeah, that has, no bearing on me. I'm never going to need to know that or use that. And so then um, I just kind of went and started. And then it's after you do a few, you're like, okay, well, these need this and these need that. Uh, oh, I have five of these that need this. Ooh, I'll make a new, I'll make, I'll make a new column. <laughs> so um, if you do want to make your own column, so I just added that one at the end, but if you wanted to put um, a column um, at the beginning, if you're not familiar with how to use um, spreadsheets, I'm just going to walk you through adding a few, just a few basic things. So what you can do here is let's say I want um, between the, the germination and the frost, um, I actually want to put in whether the, they need light or not. And that's actually probably one that I should put in there. And I thought I had it on the other one, but I've changed my sheets so many different times. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hit the word insert. I'm going to go with a column and I'm going to insert and I can decide if I want to add a column to the left of where I'm at or a column to the right of where I'm at. So I'm going to do mine to the left and I'm going to go like that and boom, now I have a column to the left and then you can just drag it over and make it smaller. Um, and then this is, you can just do if it needs light or not or however you want to right? And so the nasturtiums need light. Yes. And so then I'm going to put yes. All right. And then that way um, I can just put yes and no. Um, what else? Snapdragons. Yes. Ah, I'm way over. I'm on the wrong keys. Um, petunias. Yes. Okay. Um, gosh, I can't even type. Yed. Oh my goodness can't find my keys and then viola is no so then what i can do is i can go in like this and if i'm like doing my trays and i'm like oh which tray should i put together i can go into data i can sort it and i can sort column a and then it's going to put all the no's and all the yeses like it'll divide them that way right um i can also go here and i'll be like oh so i'm it's what week what, what goes first boom this will put them all in, in order of, of, of the days and the weeks to, to when to start things. Um, uh, when to plant outside weeks and things like that. Um, I can just organize them and here, like I can organize them by height. So if I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to build my garden, um, you generally you want the things that are the tallest at the back and come down to the front. So then I can just go in and I can organize them. Um, that way by height. So then I can scroll over and be like, okay, so these are my shortest plants. Um, and then my asters, my alyssum. Uh, oh, that's spacing. Where's the, where's the one I did? I lost it. Do do do. Or was there no height? And I was just looking at the spacing. <laughs> why don't I have height? I had height on my other one. I don't know why I don't have height. Um, and then, so like, I don't know where my veggie one is either. Let me see if I can find it. Um, so let's say you go and you want to open up, see, I, I had the vegetable chart, but then when I open it, it's, it's all the flowers. It's the same one. So I don't know what happened to my veggies. Oops. Um, but like for the vegetables, I will do like a section, um, like tomatoes and then I will put in, are they dwarf tomatoes? Are they indeterminate tomatoes? Are they vining tomatoes? Because it all depends on when I'm going to be starting those tomatoes and it'll depend on where they're going to end up in the garden. Right. So it's just all kinds of great information, um, that you can just have all at once, um, easily. I hate Excel, the Baino. I love, I don't know. I love spreadsheets. I do love Excel. Um, I don't know. I always enjoyed business management classes in high school and, um, I used them for, I used them for work. So, um, my dad was, um, in construction and my sister did all of his, um, you know, bookkeeping and billing and all of that. 
And then when I got old enough, I did it all. So I used Excel. Um, I was using, well, I was using Lotus one, two, three. <laughs> Back when I was in grade school, um, I was helping her out, uh, keeping track of the books and everything. And so, so we did use a lot of spreadsheets. So I've just kind of gotten, gotten used to them. Right. Um, I was, oh no. Well, that's the thing is, so if, if you're worried about that, if you, so let's say you've got all your information in and you want to change a few things, or you want to try something else, go in and do the whole save as copy. Okay. So then you're going to go and you're going to go file. You're going to click, make a copy and then click, make a copy and then make all your changes in that copy. Um, so that if you totally mess it up, it's your original is still there. But don't forget, you still have the, you have the back arrows buttons too, right? Like you can always click back and undo if you if you you know change things or whatever too much. Um, this is a great idea. I remember Nicole Pitt's video she did about this. I should have kept it, but since I have made it, yeah, yeah. So that was uh, she inspired me when I saw her spreadsheet and how she had it all worked out, and I was like, ooh, that is very interesting. Hey, Chuck, welcome in. How are you doing? Glad to have you in here. Um, I use it for, well, if you could see, I, I have, um, I, I use it for a lot of things. <laughs> um, another thing here is, um, okay. So this, I think I also downloaded from Nicole. Um, this was her grow along. Yeah. So Nicole Flower Hill Farm, she had a grow along this year. You could go buy the seeds from, I can't remember who the supplier was. Um, but it was the same seeds she had. And so you would all start them together and you would like grow them together. So this was her chart for that. Um, and so I just kind of copied it because I do have um, similar plants um, that were available. Um, I use spreadsheets a lot. Um, I like it for my, um, my seed swaps. So what is this? Okay. So this was just the, the download from Johnny's. So I should delete that one because that's last year's and this year it will have, I mean, it'll be similar, but it'll have slightly different dates. Um, so then I have seedlings seeds. So you can see my seed swaps, my seed swap spreadsheets, um, my wish list for seeds. <laughs> um, to do list. Um, oh, I also have this. If anyone wants um, a copy of this, if you save your seeds, if you're doing any seed si seed swaps, um, and you don't want to have to write on all the little packages all the information, I've um, I've offered this to some of the seed swap groups. Um, hey, Jesse, welcome in. There's just too many cotton picking lies. To I'm sorry, Jesse. I know. I. I, I picked Thursday nights because no one was on Thursday nights originally. It was a really quiet night. And then all, all of a sudden, everyone, everyone's picking Thursday nights um, for sure. Yeah. Um, so this one here is for um, if you're doing seed swaps. I mean, it's it's good information to have and keep to your, keep for yourself. I'm trying to increase the size on this, but it's not going up. There we go. Um, so what this is, is let's say um, Nicole and I do a seed swap. And she just puts, you know, like um bottle no what was it bowl gourd she writes bowl gourd on you know on the the seed packet it's not letting me type hmm, it's not letting me type that's weird so let's say she puts um bowl gourd on the seed packet but let's say it has specific um information like some of these did that are kind of particular instead of having to put it all on um to like to write it all out because some people I've done seed swaps with and they literally like handwrite um, information and the size and all the growing instructions for the seeds that they sent. So what I did is I made this um, spreadsheet. So, okay, I don't want to got it. Um, so what I did is I made this spreadsheet so that I'm trying to make it smaller so I can actually see it now. Um, you can just put in the name and you can put all that information on there. And then when you're doing a seed swap, you can just either print it out or you can just give someone the link. So you're not constantly having to rewrite it or whatever. Um, and it's also something, you know, it's handy to, um, to keep for yourself. So um, this is more for seed saving or seed swapping. Um, and you could, you know, I left this little miscellaneous one down here too. So you could keep this yourself if you're like for collecting seeds and it's your first time collecting seeds and you want to kind of keep track of, of, of how, uh, you know, notes on it. So we have vegetables, I have herbs, I have annuals and perennials. So um, if anyone wants a copy of this, you just click make a copy, 
copy of copy of seed list and then save my copy. Um, change it to whatever title you want it to be. And so I will, I will, yeah, anyone with a link, right? Here we go. So I will drop that there and I'll put that also in the um, description as well after the live. I'll put that down in the description. So if you want a copy of that spreadsheet as well, um, that's all you do. Okay, so just like this one, this one's mine. It's got all my information on it. But when you click on the other, the, the original blank one, um, which I think I closed it out already, sorry. Um, you're just gonna, you're gonna click on the link. You're gonna click file. You're gonna click make a copy. And you can even leave it that name if you want, but make sure you click make a copy um, because then when you enter your information, it will actually be in your account and it won't be, you won't be commenting on the file in my account. Um, and then you'll, you'll go look for it and be like, Hey, where's all that information I uh, entered in? So, um, Oh, Hey Kiki, welcome in. How are you doing? So yeah. So does, um, anyone have a, oh, <laughs> thanks, <Jack. laughs> I'm just a copycat. Um, so does anyone have any questions? This is a true story. I'm not sure which that referred to. Sorry, Nicole. I wasn't paying attention. Um, or was it the bowl gourds? I'm really excited. I hope you get some bowl gourds. I'm really excited for those. I think it's super cool. Um, I will be trying again, hopefully with the, oh wait, I don't have any more seeds for the bottle gourds. Um, they bloomed like crazy. They had little babies ready to go. They did really, really good. Um, except none of them germinated apparently. I mean, not germinated, pollinated. Um, none of them pollinated. So they all just kind of fizzled out on me. And I think it's because it just wasn't enough to entice the pollinators um, up where they were at. So I do want to try them again. Um, but I will be growing um, other things with it that are much more um, attractive to the pollinators. So other vines or the morning glories or um, hmm, maybe if I put them down because they love like the calendula and some of the other things. I don't know. So we'll see. We'll see if I, if I find seeds for them this year. Um, I would like to try them again because I do think they're really cute. Um, so I was kind of disappointed that that didn't work out. Um, so yeah, if anyone, if anyone's new um, and you want me to kind of walk you through <clears throat> the, um, the spreadsheet again, I can do that. Or you can go back and, um, just watch from the beginning where I walk through everything. Uh, but I will show you what the blank um, chart looks like. Hey, random off topic question. Will honey nut squash continue to ripen off of the vine or is that it? Cause I think we are going to get an early frost here and they aren't quite ready. I have no idea. No idea, Danny. I'm sorry. I've never grown honey nut squash. Um, but I have had some that was not ripe yet and it still tasted pretty good. <laughs> uh, I picked up some birdhouse. Oh, awesome. Chuck. That'll be awesome. I want to see how you do that. Oh, thank you. Um, this is actually a liquid lipstick color that I bought this summer at the street party. There was a lady there that had a street party set up and she was selling different shades of it's a matte liquid lipstick. And the first time I put it on, I almost had a heart attack because it is incredibly bold and vibrant. And I only wear it for camera because in person, it's like my lips are on fire, but on camera, it's, um, it's, it's muted enough. And then, um, I don't, I'm not a huge fan of the matte finish. So then I usually just put like a clear gloss on it. Um, she also had these really cute. Um, so her name is Kay's beauty. And she also had these really cute, this is a, um, cuticle oil with like lavender. So it's got little flowers in there that she put and it's got a little brush so you can brush it on your nails. It's my daughter's. I don't know why it's by the computer, but it is. Um, so thank you. I've gotten more into some of the liquid lips, um, lipsticks because it stays really well. Um, and I love, um, yeah, liquid, look into like liquid lipsticks. Um, they stay really, really well. Um, I think it's Revlon has like a vinyl, it's called vinyl, 
final ink or something. And it's like, it's a liquid, li it, it feels weird. Liquid lipsticks feel really gross putting them on until it kind of sets. Um, and you, you have to, um, there's a lady on, on, um, on Instagram that I follow that does makeup tutorials and stuff. And she, she tells you how to put it on. Um, you have to just put it on and do not push your lips together like you normally would with lipstick, um, things like that, because it'll just stick. It's a very, very odd texture, but it lasts really well. Um, and my favorite thing though, um, especially like just for every day is a lip stain. I love a good lip stain. Um, you put the color on and it kind of just seeps in. It gives you nice color, but it does not look like you're wearing lipstick at all. You can still see your natural lip. It just looks like you have color on your lips. And then the rest of the day, you can just go and put, um, just like a clear balm. So I'll do that when I'm at work because sometimes it's like I'm tired and I need a little bit of color, especially in the winter time. And, um, you know, I'm working construction. I don't always want to look like I'm wearing lipstick. Um, especially like with the masks and stuff, when you have to wear the masks, wearing lipstick with a mask is disgusting. So, um, just doing the lip stain, um, you don't have to worry about it getting on the inside of your mask. So, Hey, belt loop. Okay. So yeah. Um, I've had a ton of of comments coming up in YouTube in the last like week or two, um, that are not, um, showing me like from months ago, I, I had a comment from last year on a video. Uh, and I'm thinking of this because belt loop just replied to one of my comments from a month or so ago. Um, and he's like, Oh my God, I just saw this today. And I know, um, Nicole, uh, that happened to her. She commented on a, something from like five months ago, a comment that I had made. Um, and that happened to me tonight again. Um, I went on YouTube and it's like, I check my comments all the time. And, um, I was actually downloading the thumbnail from this live to post it on Instagram. And so I went into YouTube, um, studio to, to download the thumbnail. And then all of a sudden I hit comments and there's like 10 comments in there. And I was like, what? And then there's like, this one was from three weeks ago. This one was from a year ago. This one was from five months ago. So, um, yeah, just this week it's happening, right? I try to wear makeup only once or twice a year. <laughs> well, you know what? It's funny. I grew up where like in my household, it was like, you get up in the morning, you put your face on, you do your makeup, you do your hair, you get dressed. Even if you're not going anywhere, even if you have no plans for the day, you get up, you do your hair, you do your makeup and you get dressed. Um, and the family motto was like, you, cause you feel better. You will feel better. Um, especially, you know, I guess it was maybe they're like, no one ever really talked about, you know, like depression or things like that, but it was always like, if you're feeling miserable or you don't feel good, you know, if you fix your hair and makeup, you will feel better than if you just hang around in your pajamas all the time. Um, so that's, that's how I grew up. Right. And, um, like you didn't leave the house without having makeup on by the time I was like 14 or 15. Like that's just like my sister would go out of the house and she felt naked if she didn't have earrings on. Like it was just always full makeup, everything. So that's how I grew up. Um, and I had a lot of, um, I didn't have like acne, but I had very, very dry skin. And so I got like really dry patchy skin and, um, I had a lot of redness and so I would wear foundation to cover it. And then once you put on foundation, <laughs> If you don't put on other makeup after you look dead <laughs> because it just takes out any natural color. So once you put on, once you put on foundation to, um, cover your skin, then you have to put on a little bit of blush, um, and then lipstick and, um, and whatever. So, um, and then when I was in, I think it was about 13 or 14, my aunt got a job working at the makeup counter for Christian Dior at Nordstrom's. And it was the most fabulous thing was to go in and visit my aunt while she was at work and she would do makeovers and we would get free samples. And I would just really, really loved, um, I just, I enjoyed makeup. And then when I moved to Florida in my early twenties, I actually went to, um, school there, um, at Florida college of natural health, become an esthetician. Um, and so I did get my esthetician's license for skincare. So facials, um, skincare and makeup artistry. And then, um, I worked for about a year or so when I was in Florida for a makeup and skincare private label company. So I was a sales rep for that. So um, I've always really liked makeup. I enjoy putting it on. I enjoy wearing it. I enjoy buying it. <laughs> buying it's about the most fun. Um, so I, I do enjoy it. Um, and I always, always wore it. And like, even if I was like going to just go out and walk the dog, 
I would put makeup on. Uh, we would go camping. I would put makeup on before I came out of the tent. It was just so ingrained in me. And then um, we we started doing a job. Um, so this goes back about five or six years ago. We started doing a job where um, we were scra- We were doing a lot of stucco repairs. And so some days we I would know, okay, I'm scraping a ceiling today. I have to wear my respirator. So I wouldn't put on foundation um, because it would get all gross and nasty. And then sometimes on this job, um, you know, we would be like, oh, okay, well, we're planning on painting today. Um, but they're like, oh, we can't go in those rooms because the other guys are working. So we have to go and scrape over there. And so then I'd have to put my mask on and I'm like, oh crap, I wore makeup today. So I quit wearing makeup. I, I, that is how I grew up. We all did it. We wake up in the tent and we'd all put our makeup on before we went outside. It's crazy. I know. Absolutely crazy and insane. But that's, that was like, that was how I grew up. Um, my mom now even like, is always, Oh, I need a new lipstick. She's always got to have her, her makeup on. Um, and, uh, so then I quit wearing like just foundation, um, to work for that job. And then, um, that kind of broke the cycle for me a bit. And then, um, about four, yeah, it was four years ago. It was right after I turned 40, (laughs) I started noticing like I was getting like this crepiness on my neck. I saw it in a mirror. And I had a heart attack. And so I went on YouTube and I started doing um, face yoga and um, facial uh, massage. This is true. <laughs> this is true. Uh, it's true, though. When you look good, you feel good or at least better. And I, it, it's true, right? Exactly. Oh, yeah. No, I wouldn't go check the mail. Nobody has, nobody saw me without makeup. Like, it just, it just didn't happen. I always just, first thing in the morning, I put it on. Um, so then, yeah, about four years ago, I started doing um, facial massage. And, uh, I didn't really do as much of the face yoga, but I do, did the facial, facial massage and I was doing it. Um, I started off like for the first like two weeks, I was doing it every single day. Um, and it was only about 10 minutes long. And then, um, it became very regular three to four times a week for about a year. And it made such a difference in my skin. My skin for the first time was smooth and even, and I wasn't self-conscious about it. And I didn't, and I, I was like, oh, I don't, I don't need to wear foundation anymore. Um, and so prior to that, I was wearing a fairly heavy full coverage foundation all the time. And then I was just like, I don't, I don't need to wear oh, my mascara. Is much. I put oil on my face tonight and then I realized, oh, <laughs> why did I do that? Um, so, uh, yeah. So then I just kind of quit wearing, wearing foundation altogether. And so now, um, I wear it for my lives and some of my videos, not all my videos, but now I just use, um, I just use like a BB cream. It's just like a tinted moisturizer and mainly just to kind of help everything just kind of just even it out a little bit with, with the light on it. Um, but yeah, now I hardly ever wear makeup. Like I'll, I'll be like, if I'm going to go to the store, like when you go shopping, like, you know, with my friend or whatever, I'll get dressed up. I'll throw some makeup on or if I'm going out, um, or if I'm, you know, if I'm doing some of my videos, but some of my videos, I don't, I'll put mascara and lip gloss or lip stain on. And that's it. Um, I just, I really don't care as much anymore. <laughs> so I don't know. This is like, some of it is like maybe my eyesight's getting worse. Um, but, um, no, actually my, my, my skin is just a lot healthier now than it ever was, um, before I just don't have that patchiness, the blotchiness, the redness, the rough, you know, people look at you and go like, what's going on with your face? Um, I'm using elf brand BB cream. I am using elf brand. Um, my friend swears by and sells, um, unique. I don't know if you've heard of that. It's like a she does, it's like a multi-level thing or whatever, but she swears by, um, the unique brand. Um, um, I think it's their BB cream and then their foundation and things like that. But I just, I buy the, I bought the elf one and I really liked it. I've tried a few others and they, they didn't work and they were kind of gross. Um, but I just, I really like it and just put a little bit on and, um, and yes, face yoga is a thing. Face yoga is amazing. There's a wonderful channel on YouTube where she does, um, face yoga demonstrations and exercises. And it's, and I've got rid of my 11. You see this? Look at, look at this. No 11. You see that? I used to have really deep 11 lines. I still, I got to work on my forehead lines, but, um, I got rid of my 11s doing the face yoga. 
and the massage. Um, the thing that's interesting with her about like face yoga is, um, your, she, she talks all about, and she'll keep showing. I love elf. Elf is amazing. Oh, no worry about loops. Thank you so much for popping in. If you are interested in the spreadsheet, um, and doing your own spreadsheet for seeds and gardening or whatever, if just go back to the video, um, I will tomorrow I'll be putting in, um, chapters. So, so you, so you can miss all, all the makeup conversation. <laughs> you can just go right to where you need if you're interested. No worries. Um, so yes, face yoga, um, face yoga method is the lady that I follow. Um, and she does classes and everything, but I just stick with like the free one. And there's also another lady that's actually local to me in Toronto. Um, and I follow her, um, on YouTube. I'm um, nope. Instagram. Let me see if Chase, if, uh, Jesse got the one I follow. Um, there's a handful of different ones out there. Um, nope, that's a different one. <laughs> um, it's probably great. Um, I just, um, I usually watch, I think it's called um, face yoga. I can't remember it, but honestly, for me, oh, sorry, okay, I'm finding this link here. Honestly, for me, it's the massage. Um, I think that it did a lot of it for me. I need to do more of the, um, I need to definitely, oh, I'm messing with my camera now. Um, no, I keep hitting settings instead of share. Hold on. Um, I need to do it. I just, I don't do it that often. I do a lot more of the face massage because um, for me, it's the the texture of the skin and my um, problem with my swelling and my edema it makes a huge difference. So this lady, I follow her. You often ask whether it's okay to do all these three in one day. The answer is so. Yes. This lady here, let me copy and uh, combine all these. Uh, let me see. Hold on. Is it gonna let me copy? Why won't it let me copy? Here we go. So um, this lady, I love her massages. There's several different ones, um, just like anything else or yoga or whatever. Find someone who you enjoy listening to and watching. So this lady, she is actually from. Oh, I think she's in Poland. Oh gosh. I can't remember exactly where she's at, but she found this book of, um, Korean facial massage techniques and she's gone through and like, um, uh, translated it. And then she will do some of the different massages. Um, and I just, I, I really liked, I really liked her massages. I really liked um, her channel, but, um, honestly you get a little bit of coconut oil, you can do it with your cleanser, but I like to do it with the coconut oil and you can sit there and just do it while you're, you know, watching, watching TV at night in bed. <laughs> I probably annoyed the heck out of my husband. Um, I'd be watching TV together and then I have my phone going with, and I'd be following along, you know, um, doing, doing the facial massage, but it made a huge difference. Um, prior to, I, I don't think if it hadn't been for, um, the facial massage that I was doing. And I, I did it religiously. I still do it. Um, not as often, but usually a couple of times a week, I will spend at least, you know, five to 10 minutes. And usually every night, like I'll do a few of the moves and whatever, when I'm, when I'm washing my face and whatever. Um, I don't think I would have been able to start a YouTube channel. Um, because I did have, I do have a lot of problems with edema and I get really swollen down here. And, um, like I, I would look at a picture every time I saw a picture of myself or video of myself, I just cringed and I would just be like, Oh, um, and so it wasn't until I actually started Yugoslavia it could be, I can't remember exactly where she's from. Um, but it wasn't until I started doing the facial massages and, you know, you know, moving the lymph, moving it out, um, into where it's like, Oh, I actually have a jawline because it, you don't notice it as much in person, but it, it shows up more on camera because, um, I was told when I went to get my senior pictures done, the lady's like, um, are you photogenic? And I was like, no, I am not. And, um, she looked at me and she goes, oh no, you wouldn't be. Um, your skin is translucent. So when the camera or flash hits my skin, it just flattens everything out. And so, um, even in high school, like we would do videos um, for public speaking class. And so sometimes he would record your thing on video and then you'd put it up on the VCR and you would watch it back. And that way you could kind of critique each other um, and you could, could critique yourself. And anytime it was a video of me, the whole class would like, he couldn't even play it. Like everyone would just be laughing because I just looked like I, I was like, I just looked like I was so swollen, swell, swelled up. Right. Um, 
So yeah, it was just, everyone would just be laughing. And he was like, how can somebody look so bad on camera? <laughs> I was like, thank you so much. I don't know. Um, but honestly, the doing the facial massage, especially um, getting, moving the lymph out of here and down my neck. I mean, so I'm still self-conscious in a lot of videos, um, you know, double chin thing and all of that. I know we all are. Um, but honestly, I don't think if, if I hadn't done um the massages and my skin getting better. I just, I don't think I would have felt comfortable. Like I would never have been able to, to watch. And, and, and a lot of times it's like, um, just so you know, I, I put my makeup on for my lives for me, this is not for you. <laughs> so uh, I do it because it's like, I'm going to sit here and stare at myself for two hours. Um, I don't want to be like, Oh my God, what is that? Oh man, you look tired. Like, you know, um, right. Yeah. So, um, Oh, and I have blonde eyelashes. <laughs> so that is why. Um, if nothing else in a video, I usually at least will put on mascara because my eyelashes are blonde and I look like I'm like half dead um, if I don't have mascara on. So um, I still suffer from acne and it's so tempting to try and cover, but that makes it worse, right? I paint my nails instead, which makes... <laughs> Oh goodness. Pianist and a gardener. I wrecked them in two days. Yeah. Um, you know what? I was having a bit of a problem with acne. Um, when my daughter was about, about two, um, I had lost a lot of weight after, you know, giving birth and, you know, it just kind of kept falling off over that first year. And so I was like, yay, this is really exciting. So, um, I started working out more and I was doing a lot of these, um, workout, um, home workouts and, um, I started getting acne from that. And, um, what helped for me, um, I started and I was like trying, you know, lots of different products I started, but I, cause I still have very, very dry skin. So that's the problem is acne and dry skin. Um, you know, you, you have to find out what your acne is caused from, right? So some people suffer from acne. It can be, there's like four or five different kinds of acne. It can be hereditary. It can be dietary. Um, especially if you're like ingesting foods that you're allergic to, you don't realize it. Um, it can be caused by the sun UV. It can be caused by other, um, allergens. Um, there's even one that can be caused by UV light. Um, certain like in, in condense, certain kind of lights, um, in like office buildings or places like that can actually cause, um, can cause acne. So in order to, to treat it, you kind of have to know what the, the actual cause of the acne is. Um, you know, if your skin's just super oily and, um, it's almost like an autoimmune, right. Um, where your skin, it's like, ah, we're being attacked. And so it just overstimulates, um, just goes into paranoid mode, um, and then that's what, what causes the acne. Um, but for me, because I still had very, very dry skin, um, I ended up using Noxzema to wash my face with and coconut oil, um, just the, the straight up pure coconut oil. And, um, after, and within a few weeks, my, my, my skin cleared up the acne that I'd kind of, um, you know, I, I still like now I, I haven't had a, a breakout in ages. And I know that that is probably because, um, I'm still doing the, um, the, 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 whatever this is called massage. Um, and I do use, um, oil on my face every night. Um, and I do love, um, Burt's Mies makes a really nice oil cleanser. It smells amazing. Um, so keep in mind just because you have acne doesn't mean you need to avoid oils all the time. Um, a lot of times I know people are like, Oh, I have to use oil free things because I have acne. Um, but sometimes the body just keeps producing oil because there's not enough oil there. And so if you supplement it with a healthy oil, uh, sometimes your body can actually stop overproducing the oil. So, um, bye Katie. Good night. I hope you have a, a, a good night and enjoy. But, um, so yeah, now I don't, um, I hardly ever wear makeup. <laughs> I'll be sitting, we'll be home, we'll go to work, we'll be home and whatever. And we'll be like, oh, I'm going live. And then I put my makeup on and that's like, <laughs> my husband's like, where are you going? Like, it's like, oh, right. You have your life. It's like, yeah, sorry. Could have, could have put my makeup on a little bit, but a little bit earlier for him, but, uh, no, um, I hardly wear it at all anymore. Um, and if I do, it's just mainly mascara and a little bit of, um, lip stain. And then I just put chapstick on throughout the day. Um, but I do enjoy it. So, you know, if I am going out or whatever, I do enjoy sitting down and, and trying different things and, um, I enjoy shopping for makeup. <laughs> 
I use Maruka oil. I also use Manuka honey oil cleanser twice a week. Oh, very nice. Very, very nice. I made my own, um, I made my own oil cleanser and I liked it. And then I bought the Burt's Bees ones because it was on sale and it's amazing and it smells really good. Um, right now I'm using a, a cream cleanser. It's all right. I can't wait till it's done. And then I can go back to using <laughs> using an oil cleanser. Um, because yeah, I have dry skin and, um, it just, it, it, you know, if you have any makeup or anything on, it just melts it all away. And it just, if your skin feels amazing. Um, and then I find like, you know, especially because of what's been going on last few weeks, years, um, having to wear masks, um, especially at work, um, depending on what I'm doing at work, I, sometimes I'm wearing the respirator. And so if I'm wearing the full on respirator, you know, that's like silicone on your face and I cannot wear any kind of moisturizer, any kind of oil, any kind of face cream, anything like that. Um, if I'm going to be wearing that at work for the day, um, because it just, it'll just, it just sweats and drips down. It's really, really gross. Um, so I do like if I use the oil cleanser and then wash it all off, I can still, my face still feels really soft, but I have super dry skin. Jojoba oil is supposed to be closest to the skin's natural sebum. They say it's the best for skin and hair. I love jojoba oil. I do have a jar of it. Um, also mink, mink oil is supposed to be really, really good for you as well as is emu oil. Very, very healing. Um, oil. And I, if anyone wants roots, roots, if anyone watches roots and refuge, um, Jess was just um, told to get some emu oil for her, um, eczema, but noxema. Okay. There's, I've read both things, but I think noxema was originally developed for someone for eczema. It knocks eczema. So it's good for, um, it has kind of got that menthol in there. It's good for, um, if you have eczema, um, eczema or eczema, however you want to say it. Um, it's great for that. I wash my flower wash face once a week when I finally take a shower. <laughs> TMI, Nicole, you should be washing your face every night and every morning. Um, and just even just splashing water on it. You don't have to go, um, all in. Um, if I'm not wearing makeup, a lot of times I just splash water on it at night. Um, or more often than not, I wash my face at night simply because I want to put on the serums and the cream. I love buying serums. I love serums. I don't spend a lot. I buy them like at Winners, which is like um, Marshall's TJ Maxx, right? So it's like a little thing like this. It might be like $6 or whatever. But I pump out my little serum and I put it on and I don't know. I love it. So I spend more actually now on skincare than I do on makeup. But um, but yeah, it does. It makes you feel better. And um makes me feel, you know, less self-conscious and, um, especially going into winter <laughs> when I won't be seeing sun for a long time. Um, <laughs> I can get very, very pasty. And so, um, you know, putting a little bit of color on, um, does help a little bit of bronzer or something like that. It helps. Yes, it is. And it is part of my, it is definitely part of my, um, self care. Um, so, you know, one of my issues, um, is like, I have the problem. I have the problem with water retention and edema, um, with edema I've had it for the past 20 years almost. And, um, also high cortisol levels, which is why I carry all my weight right in my belly. Um, and so, you know, things for cortisol levels is stress relief, right? So things that are relaxing things that bring stress release. So massage, yoga, meditation, um, all that kind of stuff. Um, it's like, I'm, I'm not doing it just to, you know, cause I'm being lazy or I'm trying to self-indulgent. Um, I know like kind of my mom's generation, that's like those kind of things were always thought of as a self-indulgent, you know, self-care, but self-care is very important. Um, for me, not only mental health, <laughs> um, you know, just to, to, to be happy and to be, to be comfortable with, with myself. Um, but also my physical health because it, it helps, um, it helps lower the stress levels, which helps with my blood pressure, which is why I started yoga in the first place, um, was to naturally help deal with, um, my blood pressure was starting to creep up due to stress. And so the different ways to help with stress, um, one of the best ways to help with stress is to take a nice slow walk. So, um, I was reading this thing and it was saying how, you know, a lot of people like wanted to go out there and do their power walking and all this and that, and that actually sometimes can, 
can release more cortisol, which um, a lot of aerobic exercises release cortisol. So if you don't have a problem with too much cortisol, um, that's great. But if you have a problem with too much cortisol and you start to, you know, work out and you start to get really active like that, um, it can actually be kind of self, self-defeating. Um, and so it was like, yes, um, you know, go for a nice walk, but a nice slow walk. Um, that you're just out to enjoy. Uh, they say, picture that you're walking with an old dog. And at the time I was reading this, I had Gizmo and he was like 14. <laughs> I was like, oh, I know exactly what that speed is. Um, and so it's about, you know, it's not out there to be, oh, I got to get my 20 minutes in. I got to get my 30 minutes in. I got to get five, 5k or whatever. It's about being outside and enjoying, you know, just, just soaking it in and taking your time and, and walking slowly and not stressing things out, you know, because I have problems with joints and stuff. It's like, sometimes you start walking too fast and, and all of a sudden, you know, this foot hurts or that knee hurts. And you're like, ah, oh, but you know, nice and slow and don't feel guilty. Don't feel guilty. We're going for a nice, long, slow walk. Don't think that you always have to be, um, you know, hitting certain numbers or, or pushing yourself the whole time, um, in order to get in order to get the benefits of it. Right. Oh, I hit the wrong button. Remove. There we go. I was trying to drop it down. <laughs> like, what am I doing? Do um, and things like that. Right. So, um, thank you. <laughs> um, you know, I know we, you know, we talk a lot about mental health, um, in the news and on TV. Um, and sometimes, you know, it's just like, what does that look like day to day? You know, how do you incorporate things like that into your life? You know, what kind of things can you, can you do, um, that you enjoy? Um, and sometimes it's just, sometimes it's, it's the little things. Sometimes it doesn't have to be something big, um, like going and getting a massage or something like that. Sometimes it can just be, you know, making yourself a cup of tea and sitting down and just enjoying, you know, having a few sips of the tea, um, walking through your garden, looking at things and not working, <laughs> you know, but watering, watering, I find extremely therapeutic. Um, and they say a lot of times because the sound of the running water is very therapeutic as is running water itself releases, um, negative ions. And so it is actually very therapeutic. So go water your garden <laughs> if you're feeling stressed out. Um, but suddenly just go out and enjoy it. Just go out and soak it in, you know, take your cup of tea or your glass of wine or your cup of coffee or whatever you want. And, um, you know, just tell yourself, just, to shut off. You know, I don't have to go out and weed. I don't have to look at that plant and wonder, oh, I should have sprayed it. I don't have to guilt myself for, oh, I got to harvest all those tomatoes. What am I doing? No, just go out and just enjoy it, you know, and just look at the beauty uh, that, you know, that, that you have, have, have created from, you know, the seeds and, and your design and, and all of the things that you've put together, you know, all of your hard work, go out and just sometimes you just need to enjoy it and, and to soak it in and to absorb it. And that's where you get, um, the, the motivation to do even more, um, you know, uh, next year, right? Like if you only focus on the chores and the tasks and the things that you did wrong and this and that, um, you, you, you take away some of that joy, you know, so focus on the joy. <laughs> Um, I took a week off work to spend at home with my garden specifically for my mental health. It's been a great week. I can't believe tomorrow's Friday. Sorry. <laughs> I just shrunk down. I took the, the seat out from my chair. Um, that's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, quiet tea time is crucial for me. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, for me, it could be a cup of tea. Um, it could be gin and tonic. Um, <laughs> it could be an iced coffee that my daughter, she loves to make coffee. Um, just, and it doesn't have to be a, a drink or anything like that. It just, sometimes it's just taking a moment to stop and to enjoy and to treat yourself. And it doesn't have to be a bad treat. Like it doesn't have to be unhealthy. Um, anything like that. You can have like a nice, you know, something healthy and, and, um, nurturing watering is so, th yeah. Oh, oh, you got to get a hose. No, 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 no watering cans. No. <laughs> oh, gosh. No, 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 no. I'm using a hose here. And even then my arm gets kind of sore from holding it. <laughs> um, somebody's just holding it. Like I noticed um, that was like the first when we finally um, hooked up our hoses at the beginning of the year. I'm, I'm standing there. I'm watering everything with the hose. And I was like, my hand's like cramping. I'm not used to. <laughs> I used to holding it, um, like that. And the little flicky thing to hold it, uh, was broken. So, um, yeah. <laughs> and then I have, um, 
for up at the top of the hill in the back, I have a, like a long pole um, watering thing. And, and after a little while, that, that can get kind of, um, gets kind of heavy too. But yeah, no, not watering cans. The only time I use watering cans is when I'm fertilizing. And then no, I'm a, <laughs> I'm a hoser. Thank you. <laughs> Um, I started to fall into that space of finding everything wrong in the garden because my time was so limited this season that I had to refocus on the beauty and everything started to happen. Yeah. And everything right starting to, yeah. Yeah. Um, a lot of times it's, it's the attitude and, and I, 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 um, I'm really glad I took the whole, um, Dexter as a puppy and I'm not going to stress out about everything this year. Um, because it just, by not like, the beds are not how they are not ideal. Let's just say it that way. They're not ideal next year. I'm hoping for a lot more. Um, the way they filled in a lot of it was just self seated and I just kind of let it happen. Um, because I had the specific things I wanted in certain places, but I was just like, hey, Dexter's a puppy and he is so hyper. And I just, I did not want to over plan everything. And, um, I'm just really glad that I kind of took that like whole chill, you know, so he runs through the flower beds, you know, I'll just be like, dude, really? But you know, he, and honestly he broke one and it was right after I planted it. One of the stalks, he stepped on one of the plants and it busted. Um, but I, I don't think he actually ruined or broke anything. Like I was shocked, like for the way he runs through there and chases the bunnies and this and that, he's very careful, um, somehow. Um, Hey, welcome in. How are you doing, Nick? Good to have you here. You're working, but listening. Ah, oh, good. Still live is going on. Oh, thanks, Scrubby. Um, yeah. And so I find like this, this time of year is, is definitely a, um, a time of reflection. You know, the harvest, um, you know, you see what, what's coming in. Uh, what did you do good on? What did you not do good on? Um, and why? So kind of reflect why. Um, to me, tomatoes weren't great this year. The, some of the dwarf varieties did amazing and have really put out um, a lot of tomatoes. And then my indeterminates, no. And um, so for me, I think some of it was it didn't have, we didn't have enough heat here this summer. And I hate saying that because I know a lot of you were just dying of heat. Um, we actually had a fairly cool summer. And, um, and I think, um, uh, another reason is the trees, our trees and the neighbor's trees are getting bigger. And so the spot I've been growing my tomatoes for years and years and years is just not getting enough sun. So, um, you know, it's time to rethink, okay, next year I will be doing things a bit differently and I'll be putting them in different places. Um, the peppers were really happy. The peppers did pretty good. Some of the peppers, I don't know. It's, it's funny. I find that sometimes if they start out really, really small, they had some that just seemed to be stunted from when they were in this, in, in just babies. Um, and then others right next to them in the same trays did amazing and put them out in the garden and they did amazing. And then um, so I don't know. It's just, it's just frustrating to know, but it's kind of like if they don't take off later, like sometimes the tomatoes, you'll plant them later and then they just take off and they'll catch up and it's not a problem. But I find with peppers, <laughs> if they're stunted from when they're little and I put them in the planters, they just don't seem to to take off. And maybe, maybe that's because I'm like, oh, these are tiny, so they don't need as much space. And so maybe I don't allocate them into, you know, the best spots. Like I do the bigger peppers and I'm like, Oh, you go here, you get the most sun, you get the heat. Um, where I have them by the house, it, it the house, the, the sun hits the bricks and it bounces off and it heats up. Um, it kind of radiates heat in that area. Um, Oh, good night, Kiki. Thank you all so much for coming in. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, don't forget to grab your, um, click the link in the description um, to get a copy of your own spreadsheet if you want to do that. And if you have any questions, um, feel free to ask. I can help you walk through it if you're not, if you're not comfortable or familiar with um, spreadsheets or you hate them like Danny. Um, <laughs> Danny's going to probably message me and be like, here, just set mine up for me. Thank you. Um, yeah. So anyone have any questions, anything going on? Um, trying to think what's going on this week. I had something I wanted to talk about and I can't remember what it was. What was it? I had something else. I was like, Ooh, I got to mention that, um, that we're going to be doing 
that I was doing this week. Um, ended up going back to Tara Greenhouse yesterday with my friend and she bought a planter. So she's very excited. <laughs> we, were, we were, She was looking for a flower pot for the front yard. Like it's a nice, and it was really nice. It's a fiba, what's it called? Fiba stone? Fiba, fiba clay. It's a fiba clay pot. Um, so it was really nice and it was half price. So she was very excited about that. She's been wanting one for a while. So, um, and then she's deciding if she wants to put anything in it for fall, um, mums or whatever. But honestly, we have like two weeks before our first expected frost, which I'm hoping it's later, but you never know. So is it really worth, um, planting those, you know, fall flowers, the fall annuals, um, the mums, um, because I know I see so many people do it and it's so pretty, um, you know, and then they'll, they'll pull out the planters because they're like, oh, they look terrible after the end, at the end of the summer. So they pull all their planters out and then they plant them up, you know, with beautiful fall flowers and grasses and ornamental peppers and cabbages and mums and pansies. And they look absolutely beautiful. And it's just, it's not something I've ever really done here because like I said before, we don't get that crazy hot. My planters are still like they go till frost. Like it's not like my petunias or anything like, Oh, they got too tired or whatever. Um, that's like September is like the best month for my planters and my garden. Like that's, I need that length of time because you know, I'm not planting out until almost June. Right. Um, and so my planters and everything goes to frost. And then once frost comes, like some of the ornamental cabbage or the pansies would be okay for a little while. Um, but I got to get my urns, um, and my planters out front. I got to get them turned over to holiday, <laughs> right? I got to get my Christmas. Um, I usually do my Christmas stuff in, um, oh, Kiki is urban girl gardening. That is her name. That's Kiki. Um, <clears throat> uh, yeah. So I like, by November, I have to redo my urns in the front with any of my holiday um, stuff, the greens and all of that, because they freeze <laughs> and my soil will freeze up. So I've run into that before. So um, it's just such a short window of time from when, you know, if I get a frost and these plants go to actually bother um, changing them out and, you know, buying something to put in there. It's just, it's just not really a need um, here up in the North. And honestly, like, I think, um, like out of all the flowers, like they had at Tara, there was like one small section of, of pansies, um, because it's just not something, um, that a lot of people do here and like fall gardening. It's not really a thing here at all. Like I cannot go to the store and buy plant starts for, um, a fall garden. Um, and I know that a lot of people down in the South are like, oh, I went into Lowe's or Home Depot and I bought my fall starts, um, you know, like the, the, the kales and the, the brassicas and all of that for, for their fall garden. And I'm like, what? I was like, yeah, no, we can't do that. So if we want to do anything like that, we definitely have to, um, we have to grow it all ourselves in order to get any of those, those fall starts. So plant starts, vegetable starts, like you don't see them here um, after the spring, like that's it because it's just not they're just not long enough. Um, like my tomatoes are still going. Like I'm still, there's certain, there's some plants out there. I still haven't got a ripe tomato off of yet. Um, there's a handful of them. I just, I haven't got a single ripe tomato off of them yet. So, um, I'm not going to be, you know, buying starts to, to start anything else. I just don't have, just don't have the time. See, that's crazy. You were so hot and dry this year. We were fairly dry. Um, we would get like all of a sudden we'd get like rain and it would come through for like two or three days. We'd get like these thunderstorms come through and then there'd be flooding. Um, but then, but yeah, we were, we were fairly dry this summer. Um, last summer we were in June was super hot. June was like record breaking heat for like three weeks in a row. And then July came and it rained like all of July. Like it rained. <laughs> like It was just, it was, it was not a great, um, year for the garden, um, as well. Um, and I ended up getting blight on my tomatoes and everything. So this year was cooler than normal, but drier than normal. So, um, I have managed to keep that off. Um, I did get a bit of powdery mildew on the calendula just recently and, um, some of the peonies, but I mean, that's expected with the peonies. So, yeah, I, I did go out and I sprayed them with some hydrogen peroxide and water. Um, but 
I'm not too worried about it. Like I don't have much, much more to go. Um, so yeah, I mean, that reminds me, I got to do my, it's almost the end of September. I got to do my September garden tour. Um, you'll get uh, to see most things are doing pretty good. There are a few things that have fizzled. They're like, just like, no, I'm done. Um, the tiny Tim tomatoes, they're pretty much ready. I'm just ready to pull, pull them out. They're not, they're not producing anymore. Um, but they've been going, I started them in January and we got fruit off of them since March. So they did their job. They're a determinant tomato. They did their job. They are ready to, I'm ready to pull them out. Um, but then it's like, it's okay because I have all the other cherry tomatoes and everything that are going now. Um, so next year, that is one thing I might do a succession planting of. Um, I might like when I plant everything out at the end of June, uh, I mean, end of May, um, I might start a few of the tiny Tim cherry tomatoes at that time. So that when they kind of peter out at the end of this, the summer, um, I, I can start them with new ones. So it was, it was a crazy year for everybody. Um, yeah, it was, it was, yeah. But I mean, you know what? And you say that, and, and I say that, and Danny says that, but when you stop and think, um, you know, I, I saw everyone I follow on Instagram, everyone I follow on YouTube, um, you know, there were harvests, you were eating from the garden there were beautiful flowers. There was beauty there. Um, you know, you didn't just sit on your butt and not do anything right. You accomplished something. And whether it wasn't exactly what you'd hoped, um, or the bugs ate it or whatever you were, you still did it. You did it. You grew that. You started from seed. You put in the time, you put in the effort, you did that. And, you know, you need to congratulate yourself. Um, you know, especially, you know, in the last few years, a lot of people had a lot of time off from work, um, or were working from home. A lot of people had more time than normal. And, um, you know, I mean, a lot of it, you know, I, I, listen, I wasted a lot of that time. <laughs> I relaxed. I took my time. Um, but I also, you know, expanded the garden. Um, I learned a lot more about gardening. I did a lot more research. I started all kinds of new seeds. I started a YouTube channel. I had to learn how to edit. I had to learn, you know, it's just like, so, so many of us, you know, we might think that, you know, the garden, you know, it wasn't maybe what we had hoped for, but, you know, look at all we accomplished this year, you know, all the time I sweated, <laughs> you, you sweated, you sweated. Yes. Um, I will say my are going crazy right now. So I'll take that, take it, take it and just think, you know what? You didn't sit home. You didn't sit on your bum. You didn't sit, you know, back and complain about, oh, I'm bored and I don't have anything to do. Um, you know, you're part of this community. You, you've took video, you, you know, you've learned how to upload it. You've learned how to, you know, market it, so to speak. Um, you know, it's just something I find that, you know, just keeping your brain going, keeping yourself active. It helps, um, you know, you're producing something, you're, you're benefiting society in a way, right? You're not just sitting home, taking, 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 you're giving and you're helping and, um, you know, supporting other people and all of that, you know, it's just taking a time where, um, you know, there's been a lot of negative, um, you know, we see a lot of, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on in the world and it's absolutely terrible. Um, these hurricanes that are going on, um, things that are going on in, you know, politics and wars and things like that. There's so much negativity, um, in the, in the world. And so to be able to, you know, provide a, you know, find a place like this where we can come and we can not stress about that kind of thing and, and find somewhere, um, where we can, you know, get together and talk about things that are important to us and things that, that we like to talk about and to be positive and, and, and be that change that you want to see. Um, Hey, how are you doing? End of the road, gourd and flower farm. How are you? This is my life's first live stream. And I want to introduce myself. My name is Danielle and I live in Northwest Ontario, Canada. Oh, well, welcome in. Very nice to meet you, Danielle. Um, I'm in Brampton, Ontario, so it's nice to have another Canadian in the house. And um, Nicole at Nicole's Garden is from Nova Scotia. So we got three Canadians in the house tonight. So thank you so much for coming in. Um, that's awesome. Um, yeah, I should ask you for tips on growing my gourds because my um, birdhouse gourds, they bloom like crazy, but they did not pollinate. <laughs> <laughs> so I will be trying it again. Northwest Ontario. I'm afraid to ask what zone you're in. <laughs> I'm in 5B. Um, 4A, I'm guessing maybe 4A. 
Um, and another Danielle. That's right. What is I'm excited for one big thing for the fall, though. Is it the um, like in your garden or for the fall? Um, your homesteading camping thingy meetup thingy. I can't think what that's called. Um, yeah. For the first time since I started gardening, I actually be in the same place in the spring as I was in the fall. So, <laughs> oh, yay, you can plant garlic. Woo. Oh, that's what I was afraid. Yeah. Oh, that's cold. And you still, you're growing gourds. When do you start them? When are you starting them? Because I think I'm trying to remember. I think I started mine in May. Um, I want to say the first or second week in May. And I had three going. And then we had that um, really big um, storm come through. And it killed the two big ones. <laughs> and I was only left with the, the little one. And then um, and then it grew. And it, it did good. It flowered. It seemed happy. But um, see, okay. I should start them sooner then. Can you prune them? Like my loofah, um, like I started my loofah in like February. And it was like growing all over. And so I kept pruning it back. Um and I don't know if that slowed it down because it did take me quite a while before I got any, um, any cords on it. Um, but I do have, I do have a handful, but they're not very big. I don't know if they're going to, I don't think they're going to get big enough, um, this year before the frost hits, but I do have loofah and I have one that's like the hourglass. I don't know what happened in the middle. It got weird. Um, okay. That's the other thing is I can't reach them. <laughs> Um, I grew them on, um, it's my dead, um, uh, weeping crabapple tree. And I thought, oh, this will be nice. They can grow up there and kind of hang down and it will cover it and look kind of like an umbrella canopy or whatever. <laughs> but then Nicole was telling me, oh, you know, you should hand pollinate them. And I was like, I can't reach them. <laughs> so, okay. So for next year, um, I will grow them. Maybe I'll do them on my arbor. Um, and then I can hand pollinate if I need to. And, and sometimes I would hand pollinate the um, loofah, but I wasn't getting a lot of the male and female flowers at the same time. So I was just like, all right. And honestly, I wasn't too worried about the loofah this year. I had so much other stuff going on. Um, I was actually really excited about the cucumelons. I was really hopeful for them because I didn't get them last year because they, they died in the, we got a snow on May 28th last year and I lost my cucumelons and my loofah. And then, um, this year I was excited because I'm like, Oh yeah, I'm going to grow cucumelons again this year. And then it turns out that I apparently got my seeds messed up and I am growing jelly melon or kiwana. So, um, it'll still be fun to eat and I'll show you guys. It's really lumpy, bumpy, um, fruit, uh, it is starting to ripen. It's starting to turn yellow. So we'll be eating that soon and I will show you that. But, um, yeah, it was not what I was, uh, not what I was hoping for. Um, you can, yes, it's also called Chinese okra. So um, the first one of the first times I was growing it, they were growing. Uh, my neighbor next door was like, hey, is that? And um, she's from Trinidad. They had a different name for it, but her it was something her mom, they cook with and, and they they grow. Um, but she had a different name for it as well. And I was like, um, it's loofah. I don't know if it's the same thing or not. Um, so I went and I, I Googled it. And uh, yeah, it was the same thing. So I, I have made it before. Um, a couple of years ago, I was growing it and I had a few that were like this. They weren't quite ripe enough. Um, before the frost was coming. And so I went and, um, I chopped it up and I found a recipe on YouTube and I made a stir fry and it, it wasn't like anything to write home about, but it was good. It was fine. Um, so we'll probably be eating these, I guess, because they're, they're not fibrous yet. Hey, FR Humphrey, how are you doing tonight? Welcome in. Thank you so much for stopping by. Um, yeah. So anyone that's in here now, um, I did go through the spreadsheets. So if you do want to, if you're interested in doing the spreadsheets, um, I will be adding tomorrow, probably after work, I will go in and add the um, chapters. So it'll be easier to find when I was talking about them. But this is a copy of it right here. Let me, I don't know. I gotta, I'm gotta. i trying to make it small. There we go. There we go. So this is the spreadsheet and I, it's linked in the description below. So if you click on it, um, you just go in and you go to file, you click, make a copy, 
and then you change it to whatever name you want and you click make a copy down here to save it to your Google account. Because otherwise, if you start typing on this one, it's on my account and it's going to be on everyone's account. And then everyone's going to be sharing the same document and it'll be super confusing. So make sure you first thing you do is you go in and you share all. Um, and then you just start plugging in um, the information that you want. Uh, we have the name, we have how many, um, i trying to remember what this one has, how many, how many days to Germany or how many am I growing? I don't know what that one is. Um, days to germination and the temperature. So if it's something that takes a really long time, you can write it down there. If it's something that needs warm temps or cool temps, write it down. Um, the weeks that when you're going to start your seeds for the fall, for the spring or the fall. Um, for me, I'm doing whether I'm putting it in a soil block or a plug. So you can change this um, if you do different, whatever um, kind of medium that you use to, to start your seeds in. Uh, is it something you can direct sow? What is the spacing? Um, here are the weeks that you're able to plant it outside. Um, and that's really helpful, especially if you have a small space like I do, to be able to plan out, okay, so these plants can go out on this date, so I can start these seeds, and then by the time I bump them up, um, just to make sure I have enough space for everything, right? Um, and then here, days, you know, days to bloom, first bloom, is it an annual? So some of this I've used when I'm sharing seeds and doing seed swaps is I will actually share this document. So if anyone has any questions on any of the seeds that I'm sharing, they can just go in and see the, the care for all of them, right? Um, and then it's, can it handle frost? Oh, and I forgot I was gonna add into this one was um, companion, companion plants. You know what, I can't see my keyboard. I'll add it in after. <laughs> so here's an example of mine. Um, and all the different things and the information that I have added to my chart over the years. Um, some things I, I just, I know like poppies, like from now on, I'm, I, if I grow them at all, I will just do winter sowing container and that's it. Um, most of them reseeded. So I'm not even going to really worry about putting too much information in it because, um, I already know tomatoes. I know, um, unless it's a certain specific variety um, or like the dwarf tomatoes. So my regular tomatoes, I usually start beginning of April. Uh, the dwarf tomatoes, um, I start in January because I can maintain them because they stay smaller. So um, you can go in and adjust this, um, put in whatever information you want. If there's too much information, just go in and delete the columns that you don't need. Uh, if you have any questions on it at all, Feel free to ask me and I can help you walk through it if you're not familiar with using spreadsheets or whatever. Um, but if you want to have your own spreadsheet to organize your seeds, um, like I was saying earlier, I organize my seeds by um, the month that I will be planting them out. So my January seeds I'm planting in January, they go together in January. My seeds for February go together in a baggie for February. And that's how I, I plan it out. And I try to do that all in November, December, get everything ready um, so that I'm ready to go so that March doesn't come around and all of a sudden I'm like, oh my gosh, I didn't start my onions, which I was supposed to have started in January, right? So it just helps to keep it um, somewhat easier. You go, oh, wow, that's pressure. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have any pressure. If I don't, if I don't get loofah, I don't get loofah. I still have some um, that I'm using in the shower from um, years ago. So um, they do last for a very long time, but that's really cool. We, we didn't, we did make some soap with them um, two years ago and gave them out as Christmas gifts. So that was fun, but um, that's, that's super cool. Good for you. Um, yeah, that's cool. Yeah. So I, I originally saw this over on um, Nicole uh, from Flower Hill Farm and she shared her, um, the spreadsheet that she had worked up. And then I went in and I changed mine out because hers were very different um, needs for mine because she's a flower farmer. So a lot of hers were more, um, you know, she just had different, different things that I needed. And I went in um, and changed it up a lot because of doing the soil blocks and doing different things. Right. We have a commercial loofah grower here in the Annapolis Valley of Nova Scotia. She grows a ton every year. Wow. Well, you know what? Once you figure it out, they, they grow like crazy. Um, and I spent, I think it was two or three years I grew the loofah and the jelly melon and nothing. Never germinated, never got anything off of them. And I was like, okay. These are the last, like, had like two seeds left in each pack. I was like, this is it. I'll plant them. I'm never growing them again. That's it. And that year I had a ton. I had a ton of loofah. I had a ton of jelly melon. <laughs> I was like, okay. Apparently they heard the threat. Um, and so then I've grown them 
um, every year since then. Well, I wasn't planning on growing the jelly melon because I wanted the cucumelon, but we have that. So, hey, welcome in Urban Gardening Chronicles. How are you doing tonight? Hopefully you are doing all right. And um, like me, hoping uh, not to see a frost anytime soon. Um, but we have been down. We've been down in the 30s um, at night a few nights. And uh, some of my coleus, I went out and I pulled some black leaves off of a few of them. So some of my coleus is not looking great. And um, yeah, my jelly melon didn't do anything this year, but I was away for a while. Yeah, I think it's a it's a pretty, it, it likes a lot of water. At least mine has. Um, it's kind of in that cucumber melon family. It likes a lot of water. Oh no. Oh God, the gnats, the bane of my existence. Um, I ended up ordering a bunch of those little, um, the little yellow sticky things off of was it AliExpress or Amazon. I can't remember. I bought a ton of them and, and that does seem to help um, that. And I just take my vacuum. <laughs> I suck them up every day, but honestly, no matter what I try, the, the gnats is just, you know, I'll sterilize the soil. I will use the, the hydrogen peroxide on them. I will use the diatomaceous earth. Um, honestly, it's just, it's so frustrating. It drives me nuts. Hey, 12 Stones Ranch, how are you? Welcome in. Good to see you tonight. Um, you're excited for 49 degrees tomorrow. Wow. So that's like, I'm assuming that's your low. Um, that's, yeah, that's amazing for you. Good for you. Um Oh, and then I will drop the link again into the chat for the Johnny seed starting calculator. If you want something that's interactive, all you do is you just plug in your last frost rate and it does, it calculates all of the when to start, what seeds and when you can plant them out, um, depending on your zone, which is awesome. Um, you found nematodes you can use indoors. They work amazing. Oh, okay. That's cool. Um, I know, um, Laura was using the, like the, um, mosquito, Mosquito dip or something it's called. I can't remember. You've had frost already, right? All my pumpkin plants died early September because of chilly nights. Oh, good. Grief. Oh, okay. So you might know the answer. Um, um, Danny at Wicked Awesome Gardening was wondering if her, uh, was it the spaghetti squash or the butternut squash? If it will keep ripening after she picks it because she's going to be in the same situation. Um, if she gets a frost, she's in Boston. So she's wondering if it will keep what she can do. Um, but the pumpkins can't stay out with a frost. I guess. I don't know. Yeah. Ask her again, Nicole, Danny. I can't remember what the question was. <laughs> I guess I can scroll up, but I don't think I can still, I don't think it's going to still show up on there. I don't think it will. No. So you can ask her again. Um, being as I've never grown squash, I don't know. And, um, 12 Stones Ranch, uh, saying hello to everybody. Nice to see you pop in. Um, if I pick them, will they continue to ripen? I can't remember. I know melons don't, right? Am I right on that? I'm pretty sure melons don't. Um, but uh, I don't know about squash. If they are pretty close. Um, yeah, it was funny. So last year, um, last year my neighbor brought me this... Um, green squash it was kind of this green long squash and he's like i'm growing this in the back i got i got the plants from somewhere i don't remember what they were i have no idea what they are i'm they're not zucchini i don't know what they are but i have a bunch of them do you want one i'm like all right i'll try it and so i was looking at him like i don't know what squash this is um and then um so i i cut it and i i cooked it and i cut it and i started <laughs> i opened it up i was like oh this is it was spaghetti squash. So it was an unripe spaghetti squash. It still, it tasted just fine. Um, but yeah, it was just funny. It hadn't, um, it hadn't ripened up to yellow yet. So I told him, he goes, do you know what kind it is? I'm like, I think it's spaghetti squash. He goes, well, then that's not ripe, was it? I'm like, no. But it, it, it was still edible. Uh, once you cooked it up, it was fine. So, um, but yeah, I haven't really grown much squash here. I did do the pat. No, I've done like the baby boo pumpkins. That's pretty much it. Um, I forgot I was going to do zucchini this year and I couldn't find my seeds. And um, 
I was going to buy one at the store and it just like, they didn't have it. I don't know. It just didn't happen. And I was like, oh, I'm growing so many other things. It's not a big deal, but next year for sure, I will be growing zucchini and um, the patty pan squash never, I had started them again this year and they got, they got taken out in that storm. So um, we had all the plants sitting out on the deck and uh, we got this like terrible um, thunderstorm roll through and um, we ran out and we got soaked and threw as much as we could into the greenhouse and zipped it up. And we were just relieved that the greenhouse didn't blow away. Um, but there was one tray. There was one tray that I missed. I hadn't seen it. It was on, I forgot that it was on the other side of the greenhouse, put everything in, went in. I'm like, oh yeah, everything's good. It came out the next day. And I was like, oh my gosh, I forgot to put that in. And so um, some of the stuff was broken. Some of it was flooded out. Um, and it's part of the reason why I have so many mystery peppers this year is because they, they floated around in their spot because they're in the soil blocks. Um, they were not where they were supposed to be. So, yeah. Um, I ran out of zucchini seeds this year. I'll have to pick up. Oh, no. Oh, no. Um, I think I have some. I found them. I did find them after after the time. So um, I was always so paranoid of growing zucchini because everyone I know that grows zucchini is just like it was always like they just have too much or they don't know what to do with it. So I was always worried about that because I have such a small yard. Um, but uh, my spaghetti squash was cross pollinated with zucchini and that's what looks like a big fat zucchini. It was delicious. I ended up with three like that. Still very edible. Very cool. Very cool. I haven't grown squash, um, only zucchini and pumpkin to eat. I'm growing mostly decorating gourds. Oh, cool. Um, there's this, um, greenhouse that I went to and I will be editing the footage for it. It's called, um, Jade's garden. And, um, he has all these super cool, um, squash, and um, pumpkins that he grows. Um, the, the My favorite was the swan gourd. I had never seen that before. And it like it grows. It's like it's like, uh, you know, a big ball. And then it's got like this long neck that that curves around. It looks exactly like a swan. Like I was just like, what? Like, that's crazy. It was super cool. Um, actually, did I upload the video? I was going to upload it and show it to you guys tonight. Um, I was walking through and looking at all of these pumpkins and then he has like the warty pumpkin and then there's a warty pumpkin and it's called um, lunch lady. <laughs> I was like, that's terrible, but funny. Um, and then he had like the Cinderella pumpkins and the stacking pumpkins and they're really pretty here. Let me see if I can get it to upload. Hold on. It's processing. So this is a quick clip that I took on my phone. So I don't know hundred percent what's on this clip. So. Okay, not a lot. Um, place to walk through and the guy that works there is like super nice and he's just always he's super helpful and chatty and and, and they grow beautiful beautiful plants um did you plan on doing a video about your first few months being monetized you only seem to see vi videos like that from bigger creators um i don't know like i i don't um i hadn't really thought about it i, I have no problem telling you uh, let me see i'll go into my creator studio and, um, honestly, there's, there's not a lot to tell. <laughs> don't, don't get your hopes up. Um, so, uh, when was I monetized? It's been what, has it been six weeks now? A month, month, six weeks, something like that. Um, so I'm going to go into my analytics and I'm going to go into my, so all time, my lifetime. And I will show it to you here. Um, add to stream. So you can see my lifetime estimated revenue from 
the time I got monetized, which was, was it, is this what it's showing? I can't remember the exact date. No, it's June. Um, it's $33. <laughs> so, um, I think I'm averaging something around like $5 a week so far. Um, I will say that my video views for the last couple of weeks have been just really low, really low. And I remember this happening, um, last year, um, around the same time. So I think a lot of it is the fact that people are burnt out. Um, no one's really interested in gardening right now. Anyways, you're so busy out in your own garden, getting ready for fall, fall gardens, harvesting, bit of a burnout, things like that. So hopefully things pick up again. Um, but, um, yeah, uh, I'm going to do a video on that in January the 4th. It won't be a full year just from when I was monetized, though, through December 1st. That's not bad for our first month or so. Um, yeah, I think it's like six weeks, I want to say. Because um, that's, yeah, lifetime. So then the last, so the last 28 days, it's 19. So then the last 90 days is, is when it is in there. And I can't, I cannot remember the, the exact date I was monetized. I don't know. <laughs> it's not. Um, yeah, I think I'm, I'm, I was averaging about $5 a week, something like that. So it's definitely not something <laughs> that, um, you know, I will not be, um, you know, quitting my day job anytime soon. Um, and it has not covered my seed order. Um, but yeah, anytime you want to ask, I mean, I have no problem. I have no problem sharing um, that. I know some people are like super, super closed about it, but um, you know, some, some views um, like this live, like I didn't go live. Was it last week? I didn't go live. Yeah. I didn't go live last Thursday night. Um, I just, I was busy kind of doing other things and I just was like, you know what? I just feel like I needed a bit of a break. And so I was like, well, there goes a dollar 50, you know, <laughs> because um, I think that's pretty much like I can go in and um, let me see. Um, does this show how much? Okay. So August I made 13 and then September it went up to the 19. So $19. So August and September. Um, and then I have other, actually, fortunately I'll get a payout sooner because I do have a Google AdSense account for my blog and I have like $20 sitting in that, I think. Um, so these are my top earning videos. So this is what's interesting is my top earning videos in the last 90 days is my dividing my 16 year old hibiscus. So that was a video from the summer, um, the, from the spring, then my plant of the week episode four o'clock from last year, um, planting the crates, my garden huckleberries from last year. This is my number one top video. This video I is always in my top top 10 videos every month for some reason apparently no one else in the internet has a garden huckleberry video um so so those are, are like the top earners but um like my my summer garden tour video 93 cents um uh, limehouse conservation 79 cents right like so it's just um right like it's it's <laughs> It's better, as my uncle would say, it's better than a poke in the eye with a sharp stick. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm not raking I'm not raking it in yet. Um, it's just you know, hopefully you know with more views, um, people watching the videos. Um, what I did for the live stream and what I'm doing now for my premieres is I'm putting the um, I'm doing the ads where there's no I don't want the ads in the middle, right? If I'm doing a live stream or I'm doing um, the premiere live. I, I don't want ads to pop up in the middle of it. Cause then it's like people, half of the people are chatting, half of people have a lot, a, an ad that's longer. Um, and I put on for, at the beginning of it, the clickable, the non clickable, um, ads. So if you get, if you put clickable ads on it, um, they can be anywhere from like, you know, 30 seconds to 45 minutes, um, sometimes. Right. And if I'm going into a live or I'm watching a premiere, I don't want to sit through like a long, you know, I'm going to miss half of it. Right. So I put the non clickable ads and I think the limit on those are like 15 seconds, 15 to 20 seconds. You can't click off of them. You can't skip it. Um, but they're short. 
So I put those on the beginning of my premiere and my live videos. And then what I will do is after tonight, like after this, I will go and take that and put the clickable add on, right? Because then if someone's watching it later, um, it'll just become like a regular video. And then I will add in the midstream lives um, ads um, at that time. But I don't want them when I'm actually live, live. Um, but I'll go in and, and, and put it, put it on after change it out a bit. Um, if I remember <laughs> before I go to bed. Um, yeah, because that's the thing is if I'm watching a premiere, like it's like the thing with watching a premiere is I have no idea. Yes, exactly. That is my, that is my, like my best video out there. The garden huckleberry video, it gets the most views. Um, and, and everyone, like, it's just constantly like right here. Like it had 898 views um, in the last like 90 days. Like it's crazy. Oh, Dexter, of course, won. He got to like 1800 views in like, I think it was like an hour. That one video of him. I was like, what? The short. Um, so that that's that's just the way I'm, I'm, I'm going about it. Um, and I think for one of the reasons uh, I was watching, you can't eat the grass. I think it was last year and people were complaining about, you know, they want to go in their lives and then they get stuck watching. Like there's like, you know, like a 20 minute ad comes on and they didn't want to skip it. And they're like, Oh, well, I'm, I'm going to miss everything. And so she was like, Oh my God, skip it. She's like, skip it. Like I would not want anyone to have to watch a 20 minute ad, um, ever. Um, and so, uh, they switched to the non-clickable ads before their lives so that you, you wouldn't have to worry about that. Right. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Yeah, You just never know. I never know. Like I'll do, I'm like, Oh, this is the best. This is a great little clip. This is funny. This is going to get people 30 views. And then that one was just Dexter and, and his buddy Cody running around and it's like, boom, 1900 views. Like what really? Um, yeah. So, I mean, that's just my, my thoughts on it. Right. So that, um, because I know I, I will admit that I will skip, I will skip ads if I'm going into someone's live or watching a premiere. Cause I don't know how long the premiere is. Right. And that's the problem with premieres is like you go into a premiere and you don't know, is this premiere going to be five minutes? Is it 10 minutes? Is it 15 minutes? Is it 30 minutes? Um, you know, like if I, if I sit through like a three minute long, um, ad, um, by the time I get into there, it, the thing's going to be over. I don't know. Um, and even with live, sometimes you don't know how long someone's going to be going live. So, so, um, that's why I just decided to do the non clickable ads for that, just to make it, um, so then people aren't like frustrated and feel like they're missing, missing out, um, on anything really. Um, and I think I, I wish you could do like on the premieres because you can pick like, you know, it's like the two minute um, lead up, um, intro. Um, it would be nice if you could pick, you know, two minute ads or a minute, less than two minute ads to go in that spot. But sometimes, um, you know, even though you have that two minutes of, um, of, uh, intro time, it'll, it'll be like a five minute ad. And it's like, but then I'm going to miss everything. <laughs> so if I do that, I, I try to go back and reload the video after and then watch the ad. Then if I do, if I skip it, because I'm like, ah. unless it's like a big channel, that's got a lot of views. I'm like, eh, whatever, but. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. Congratulations. Okay. So you have a channel. Um, oh, oh, type in the word link. Is it link? Type in the word link and, um, Nightbot, if he's awake, um, should drop your, uh, link for you. I forgot to, uh, to log into Nightbot. Let's see if Nightbot's here. So weather, and I'm going to type in a weather and see if that's working. We'll see if, if Nightbot's here. So just, yeah, just type in the word link and we'll see. He not, he might not be, he might be asleep. It's just, just, he's obviously asleep. There we go. Nightbot is awake. Welcome in Nightbot. So yeah, drop your link there, um, Danielle. And um, I'm sure everyone will go on over and um, check you out. So you got three views. Yay. There we go. All right. We will go check it out and we will all go watch your video. So we have 12 people in the chat. Um, we should be getting get you some nice views on that. Um, 
I can't find the, the link because <laughs> I can't click on, I have to go find the link from the, um, the YouTube chat that I had. Nope. I can't, uh, can't click on it. I'll have to actually go in. Okay. Hopefully I don't get the echo. Hold on. There we go. Um, see, yeah. So I just clicked on like my live over here and the ad comes on and it says ad will end in seven seconds. Right. So boom. Um, yeah. Okay. So now I can click on it though. Now I can click on the link. All right. Well, you went from five subscribers. Let's see how many subscribers you get by the end of the night. Uh, a super new channel, uh, baby. It's a baby channel. <laughs> Welcome in. She's got five views and a compost delivery. Oh, that's awesome. Here, well, well I'll watch it right now. Oh, I love the music. Oh, that looks fun. All right. Well, I've liked it. Oh, we watched it several times now. Um, and I will go and make a comment on that after. Nicole was subscriber number four. Woohoo! How many subscribers do you have now? Oh, this is exciting. Now I have a new I have a new channel to, to promote. <laughs> oh, that's so cute. I love the music. So yeah, I will share it out for sure. Um so that's the only video you have. You don't have any other videos because I'm clicking on your home, but you have recipes, but that's not your recipes. Those are okay. Those, that's like just your recipe playlist. Okay. No problem. Okay. Michael Simon, zip it. There we go. All right. Very nice. And you are in, um, Northern Ontario. Um, do you feel comfortable giving us a, like a city nearby just to kind of give everyone an idea of where you're at because um i think a lot of people don't a lot of people <laughs> a lot of people in the u.s um are not too familiar with um ontario um geography and honestly i'm not i'm not super um i'm not super familiar with it myself being as i uh i'm not a native ontarian um so i'm just gonna pop up a map of ontario if i could type my hands off Do you hate that when you get off like one set of keys? <laughs> you're like over and you're like, ah, crap. Okay. So here we go. We're going to share that. Okay. So Ontario is a very weirdly shaped province. And I just zoomed in way too far. Hold on. Okay. So here is Ontario. And so most people think of Ontario as like Toronto, which is here, which is down like where I am, right on the Great Lakes. But Ontario goes all the way up here and it goes all the way over here. So it's like 17 hours, I think, right? It's like 17 hours to drive across for me to get to Lake of the Woods over here, which is at the edge of, of um, Ontario. It's, it's a huge province. Um, I just started my farm, so videos will be slowly coming out. I'm two hours north of Minnesota. Oh, okay. So you're over, you're over in this area here. Very cool. Actually, my grandmother was born in um, Superior, Minnesota. That's where my mom's family is from. So it's a small town along here I can't remember where it's at da, 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 da. oh here it is right here yes so it's just by Duluth so superior that's where my my grandmother was born and then um the family was in Bemidji here so where my aunts and all of them um, were born and I still have family that are in Minnesota and um Yeah, and one of these times, one of these days, I'm going to make it to Mackinac Island. We should meet up in Mackinac Island. 
Oh, yeah. Oh, that's cool. You should have come with him. Come with him next time. <laughs> Playing music the last few days. What does he do? Is he like in a band? Is he? You're close to Manitoba. Okay. So that is. Here, let me get directions. So from my house. Okay. Don't be looking at my address, people. I'm just going to type in Brampton. Hold on. Um, my location. Here we go. Um, to. I will pick. Um, oh, I'm in Kenora. How, what did I, I don't know if I, I get way too far. I'm over in BC now. Oh, there we are. So Thunder Bay. Um, oh no, that's not here. Let's say we'll pick this here. Yes, you can access my location. There we go. Like you don't know where I'm at. Why is it? Yeah, leave now. Why isn't it giving me directions? working it's not working it's just saying ontario i'm in ontario well that's not why isn't it working i don't know what's going on i'm gonna guess 17 hours <laughs> international falls okay i never even heard of that so that's right on the border i'm assuming and um, Superior Gardener, if you follow Superior Gardener on Facebook or Instagram, she is here in Superior, which is right here. Um, not, no, she's in, she's not in Sault Ste. Marie. She's somewhere around here. Or is she in Sault Ste. Marie? She's somewhere right in here, I think. So she's quite a ways from me as well. I don't think she's in Thunder Bay, though. I think she's on this side. But yeah, Ontario is like huge. So you see how big Ontario is. And then you see um, Texas. Oh, look at that, Texas. You think you're so big. Guess what? Um, you fit inside Ontario. Just saying. Just saying. Yeah. He plays bass guitar, supporting band for a young Indigenous art playing in Toronto this weekend for the Ruth. Oh, that's awesome. Wow. Super cool. <laughs> That's really nice. Well, welcome to Toronto. <laughs> and yeah, you see that? You see you see the size of Texas here? Oh, look at how tiny Texas looks. Look how tiny Texas looks when you look at Ontario. Um, yeah, so Ontario is huge. Um, Quebec is really big too. Um, because basically, I mean, Canada is a much larger country than the U.S. Um, and we only have you know, a handful of provinces. We just were like, this is like they got lazy. I think they got lazy in Canada. And they're like, yeah, we're just going to chop it up like this, right? Although Alaska's bigger than Ontario. Wah, wah, wah. Yeah, bring it. Bring it, Texas. Bring it. Um, but yeah, Alaska is enormous. And it's funny because so many times you don't, you don't realize how big Alaska is in comparison to everything else because it's always floating down at the bottom with Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> so a lot of people think oh, Alaska is like the same size as Hawaii, um, but no, Alaska is huge. Um, wow, she looks like she is farther from you than oh yeah, yeah, she's still in Ontario. She's it's, you're closer to me than she is for sure. Um, but yeah, so I'm originally from Alaska. Uh, my parents are in Anchorage right now, so they're really far away. But yeah, so see, I'm here, and Danny's. <sighs> Danny's here, Massachusetts. So we're like, Whoop. but she's all the way over here. And then we have Nicole of uh, Nicole Gardens is in Nova Scotia here. So she's like right off the coast of Maine. And then we have a Nicole Smith gardening and she's down here in Texas, right by Houston. Who else do we have in here tonight? FR Humphrey, where are you located again? I can't keep everyone straight. Yeah, he has all the fun. Oh my goodness. What? Well, you're home weeding. <laughs> um, you don't have to give me like town or city. You can just do state. We can just look at where. Um, I wish that you could have one of these things where people could come in and they could put a pin on the map and then like partway through your live, you could just show the, la the map and then boom, that's where everybody is. Alabama. We got people from all over here tonight. There we go. 
Alabama. Unfortunately, you um, you guys are missing all that storm surge and everything. Good grief. Oh, my goodness. Poor Florida. Like, it's crazy to me how the, the hurricane came up. And it came up like this. And it just went. And then it's going like this and across. And then coming up into um, South Carolina, Georgia. It's like, oh, my goodness. So, um. It's, it's reduced now to just a tropical storm, but um, hopefully before it gets to anywhere near um, Bobby and Sherry there in, in Savannah and all of that, hopefully it will, it'll lower down. Um, I used to live in, in um, over here in um, Boca, but my parents um, almost bought in Punta Gorda, which is right here. And I have a friends that are in Port Charlotte. And, um, they without power, I haven't heard how they're doing cause they're without power. And then my friend, my, her sister who used to live, um, over here in Kissimmee, she's moved to Tampa and then she was in St. Petersburg now. So, um, hopefully they all No, she was in Lakeland before. Yeah. And then now she's over here. So hopefully they're, they're doing okay. I know they were without power. And so they haven't really been able to update, but like when you watch the, the videos and stuff in, in Fort Myers and, and all of that, you know, um, I used to drive and then, the, the, you know, that they were saying, you know, to some of these places to go, you know, to get out of the storm surge. And it's like, there's not a lot of places in the middle here, um, especially down South, like it's all Everglades. So you got the two highways going across, but like, this is a, this is four hour drive across here. Right. And, um, there's just, there's nothing in the middle. There's nowhere to stop. So if you're here and you got a storm coming, um, and I mean, this time they could have gone over to the, the East coast. They didn't know it was going to stay, um, you know, fairly safe. Um, like you, you just got to go North. Everyone's just got to go North. And if you're out here on Key West, oh my God. You have to go. And uh, it's one of those things where if you're going to, if you're going to evacuate, just do it right. When you think about, should we evacuate? Just do it, do it then. Don't wait. <laughs> Cause if you hesitate, you're just stuck on, on highways and, and stuff. Right. So once you get up here, um, you know, there's more choices, but when you're down here, like this is all you have, you know, you just have a handful of roads. And if one of them gets washed out or flooded or there's an accident or anything like that, you're just, you're stuck. Right. Just, Oh my gosh. Um, we might be related. He was one of 20. Oh, what? 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 How? How, how do women do that? I can't even imagine. Um, it's awesome to see where it was. Her kids have been crazy. Oh yeah. Kate Brennan and Newfoundland got wrecked last week from Fiona. We had a bit of mess here, but it was pretty minor, really. Only less power for one day. So I have a friend who used to live on Ontario. And um, look at, see, oh, it's coming in here. Um, so she moved from Ontario to um, and now I'm trying to remember if she's in New Brunswick or um, <laughs> I think she's in Sydney. So I think they were right here. I think that's where she's at. I can't remember exactly, but they, they've been without power, um, several days and they think they're going to go, um, they'll be up towards of like a week without power, um, where they're at, but thankfully their house is okay. Um, and all of that. So, but yeah, this whole, this whole area just boom. So you're in Nova Scotia. Like, I do not know anything about Nova Scotia. Never been there. I'd love to go someday. I'd love to drive through and go um, across. I'd love to go through Maine. Um, you know, because where I'm at, it's actually it's actually shorter to go through the U.S. Um, to get there than it is to go up through Quebec and all of that. But um, yeah, and then Newfoundland just got stuff floating away and all of that. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Um, let me see. Several sets of twins. Uh, after the first set of twins, I'd be like, mm, that's off the table. <laughs> We're done. That's not happening. That is crazy. 
My husband's family is in Sydney and his sister had three, six large trees land. Oh my God. Oh my gosh. That's terrible. I should totally come visit someday, someday. Um, the problem is my daughter gets car sick still. She still gets terrible motion sickness. So road tips are not, are not super fun, but was it, I think it's 16 hours. I think it's something like that. 16 hours to, to the ferry or something like that. Because my friend, um, when they moved out, I think they drove it and it was 18 to go this way and 16 to go this way or something like that. Um, so it's a bit of a hike for sure. And the problem is, is like here, it's like you either have to go down and then up. Like there's nothing that goes straight across. See, so you have to go like up through here, like some of these like larger roads. Right. And then if the weather's bad, these are like, these are closed. So my neighbors, they go to Newfoundland and they drive, but they go through Montreal. And um, I'm not sure exactly what route they go. If they go through Quebec City and then back down. That like seems really far out of the way. I don't know. But yeah, that must be like, they must go like this and then down to get. Yeah, it's too bad they can't just go straight through here. Like, <laughs> they need to build a tunnel. <laughs> they need to build a tunnel and go straight across. Um, yeah, it's pretty mountainous in there, I guess, in the middle of nowhere, but whatever. So anyways, I've been on here way too long tonight. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for coming in and hanging out with me. Um, if you have any more questions about the, um, whatever that thing's called, the spreadsheet. If you have any more questions about the spreadsheet, feel free to ask. And um, I hope you guys all have a great night, a great weekend. And um, we're getting ready for Thanksgiving here soon. So Thanksgiving in Canada is on October 10th. <laughs> so i got to start thinking about that. We're going to start doing some decorating um, fall decor. I was actually working on my mini garden fall decor today. Um, I just have to do some, I think I'm going to put some varnish on it so I don't ruin anything. But um, it is definitely bedtime at work tomorrow. Um, friends, any of you want to see their faces in my next action adventure comics? Many of our friends appear like Jesse, Chuck, Gary, and Tasha. Oh, that's so cool. That's fun. Great job, Carby. Um, thank you so much, Nicole. <clears throat> my voice is starting to go. <laughs> I shouldn't have just, I shouldn't have gone with water. Sometimes I'll go with tea and it seems to help. But, um, thank you so much, everybody. Uh, nice to have everybody in and I will see you, uh, next time. Bye. I gotta click the button. <laughs>